So good, we're all set. The meeting is now being recorded. Okay, super, thank you, Ben. Uh, welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission public hearing and public meeting on Wednesday, May 19th, 2021 at 6.31 p.m. Based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, General Laws Chapter 30A, Paragraph 20, and signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020, this hearing and meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. The public can listen to the proceedings by visiting the town's homepage and navigating to the town calendar toward the bottom of that page. Click on the meeting schedule for May 19th, where the Zoom link and telephone connections can be found. My name is Jane Wald and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.32 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and uh, minutes are being taken as usual. So I'll take, an att uh, take attendance by roll call. Board members, as you hear your name called, unmute yourself, answer affirmatively, and then uh, please place yourselves back on mute. Patricia Auth. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Janet Marquardt is not here yet. Uh, Hetty Startup. Present. Oops. Thank Present. Ingwald. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, and so the four of us constitute a, a quorum. Uh, so a few um, kind of housekeeping comments. Um, board members, if any technical difficulties arise, um, we may need to pause temporarily to rectify the problem and then continue the meeting. And if you do have technical issues, please let Ben know uh, through, the, through the chat if that's available to you. Um, I'm not sure that's available, but um, you can raise hand. Yeah, raise hand or shoot me an email. Okay, thank you. Um, Let's see, discussion may be suspended while the technical issues are addressed and the minutes will note if a disconnection has occurred. Um, because we have a very full agenda and to maintain an orderly discussion, please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. Um, I'll, I'll see your raised hand and call upon you to speak. And if I don't, Ben, ben will uh, help me keep track of commission members who wish to be recognized. Uh, and then after speaking, uh, remember to remute yourselves. For members of the public, opportunity for public comment will be provided during the public hearing at appropriate times and during the general public comment period later in the agenda. Um, please be aware that the commission will take note of comments but um, will not necessarily respond to them during public comment periods. If members of the public wish to make a comment during a public comment period, um, uh, you must join the meeting via the Zoom teleconferencing link or the video uh, or, uh, or video conferencing link. Um, as explained earlier, these links are available at the, um, uh, on the town website at the calendar listing for this meeting. Um, Please indicate you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you've joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. Um, when called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address uh, and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for uh, up to three minutes and at the discretion of the commission chair. So we um, will now move on to the public hearing. Um, we have uh, four uh, demolition permit requests and um, I will take a little bit of time to explain how we'll go about this. Um, in accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 13, Demolition Delay of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. The Amherst Historical Commission is holding this public hearing to provide an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the following demolition application requests. Uh, 90, Major uh, 90 Memorial Drive, uh, a request from Maya Marks and Nicholas Dufresne, 
20 Ball Lane, a request from Carl and Theodora Matisco, 599 East Leverett Road from Donna and Marvin Spence, and 462 Main Street from John Robluski. Um, these applications and other historical information on the affected properties are available at the Document Center on the town website. So the public uh, hearing is now open. Um, I'll take just a few minutes to explain the goals and procedure for this public hearing. Uh, so I, I hope you'll bear with this explanation. Uh, section 13 of the town's zoning bylaw governing demolition delay for structures of historical or architectural significance declares that as a matter of public policy, the economic, cultural, and aesthetic standing of the town of Amherst can best be maintained and enhanced by due regard for the historical and architectural heritage of the town by striving to discourage the destruction of such cultural assets by the protection, enhancement, perpetuation, and use of structures of historical and architectural significance located within the town of Amherst is a public necessity and is required in the interest of the prosperity, civic pride, and general welfare of the people. Under Massachusetts general laws in the town of Amherst zoning bylaw, the Amherst Historical Commission is responsible for enacting the purposes and procedures uh, of this policy. So the procedure for the public hearing will be that the commission will hear uh, testimony as follows. Um, first, a, uh, a report or comment presentation by the applicant, if they have anything to add to, their, uh, to the, the application already submitted. Additional information from town staff, if any. Uh, questions from the commission members. Um, applicants' responses to any of this. Um, then there'll be a, a, a request or a period for public comment. Uh, final comments and questions from commission members and staff. Uh, and at the conclusion of, uh, of this, uh, the hearing will then be closed or continued to a future date and time certain. Once closed, the Historical Commission will begin deliberation of all information received according uh, and evaluated according to the standards for designation as a significant structure in section 13.4 of the zoning bylaw. For the benefit of members of the public attending this meeting, the Historical Commission's deliberations may result in one of three outcomes. Uh, first, a finding that the building is not a significant structure according to bylaw criteria, in which case the demolition permit is approved. Uh, second, a finding that the building is a significant structure according to bylaw criteria, but that the proposed demolition would not be detrimental to the historical or architectural heritage or resources of the town. Or third, uh, a finding that the building is a significant structure according to bylaw criteria and that the proposed demolition would be detrimental to the historical or architectural heritage or resources of, of the town. Uh, in this third instance, um, the uh, application for a demolition permit might be uh, uh, delayed uh, or there can be discussion of other, um, other options. Finally, it's understood that the purview of the Historical Commission in this public hearing is only to assess the public interest in preservation of existing structures. According to the current bylaw, it's outside the scope of this Commission's authority to base decisions on subsequent use of the site or pending development plans. Um, other town boards, such as the Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, or Design Review Board, um, are able to um, take up those concerns. Okay, so we have a first demolition request. Um, uh, oh, and uh, just a note for Commission members, uh, because we have um, a number of demolition requests, um, our procedure for reviewing the standards for designation as a significant structure um, 
tonight we will kind of move through uh, the larger categories of historical importance, architectural importance, and geographical importance. So that rather than um, individ uh, noting individually each of the criteria in each of these categories, I'll ask uh, for your comment on um, any one of the criteria, any of the criteria within a subhead uh, that would um, that would help us to understand uh, your sense of whether it's a, a significant structure uh, or not. So the first uh, demolition permit request is for 90 Memorial Drive. This is parcel 17A18 um, from Maya Marks and Nicholas Dufresne, demolition of a uh, roughly 1947 wood frame uh, single family residence. So I'll invite um, in the, the applicant or their representatives to um, bring any additional information to the historic commission that you would like. Great, thanks, Jane. So um, Maya and Nicholas, are you, uh, I think you're brought into the meeting now. Can you hear us okay? Yep, yep we, can. we can hear you. Okay, awesome, great. So thanks for being able to make it today. Um, I have your application up here. Um, and I'll invite you to maybe just say a few words about the proposal and um, kind of your, your uh, plans for demolishing the building and kind of what your, how, how you came to this conclusion. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so we've had this property uh, for a few years and we've been trying to plan a renovation of it, uh, but it recently uh, sustained um, some, some severe water damage uh, just over this winter with some pipes freezing, bursting. And um, we decided that right now um, we feel like it's a, it's a better plan to take the building down and start again. So our hope is to take it down and we're exploring uh, options to build, replace it with a building. Um, but if that's not feasible, um, we're, we're also considering um, just uh, keeping it sort of vacant land. Um, yeah. My hope is is to replace it, but um, at this point, you know, trying to rehab the damage um, just seems like a lot of extra wasted cost. And part of our interest in the property is we live on the opposite side of the fence, so our backyard's a buddy. Right. You're and right so, here. Yeah. Yep. So we live at 85 Hillcrest, so we would be looking to um, be able to utilize it as more land. Uh -huh. Certainly, yeah. So I, I will add just briefly um, the I do know the, the water damage, and I, I think there's also some septic issues have been documented by town inspection staff. So it's it's something that's on the town's radar, and it's uh, you know I think there's a report from the inspections department um, describing the damage as well. So um, it's a documented issue, and here are just some pictures of the house that I scroll through here. Yeah. Is that standing water there? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So whoops, those didn't come through for some reason. Oops. Not sure about that. Um but in any regards, I think the historical information we have about the building, it's, uh, you know, mid, nine, eight, mid 20th century. So 1947 um, structure, single family home, ranch style, an attached screen porch. And I guess uh, at this point, Jane, should we open it up for commission members to ask questions? Yes. Uh-huh. That would be next. So, any questions? Is um, the fact that, that the water damage has been documented by the town um, gives us some clear indication of its you know, the the scope of it? I would I would guess. Oh. Uh, yeah, um, the town was 
able to notify us that the pipes had burst um, because there was water pouring out of the basement through the garage that we didn't know about. And they believe that in the winter it had frozen. And then as it thawed, as it got warmer, it just kind of got let loose and went crazy throughout the house. And the pictures didn't show, come, didn't come through, but the wood floors are all buckled, um, the hardwood flooring. And um, since that's happened, there's also been some mold damage from that. Yeah, so I would, I would say, you know, pretty much like 80% of the, the first floor, it's only a single floor, but that's, that's pretty much damaged and, you know, parts of the walls and the bathrooms as well. Um, so it's pretty extensive. Thank you. So there, so that was a kind of a that part of it was a unique incident, I guess. Right? Is that when was that that terrible winter a couple of years ago? Actually, this was uh, uh, during this past winter. Oh. Um, I think it was an issue with the furnace um, oh. failing, and then um, us not realizing mm. just you know in the midst of the winter, and then and it, I think it happened sort of, sort of towards the end. So. As soon as things started warming back up, um, the town saw the meter and caught the issue and mm -hmm. yeah. unfortunately a little too late at that point. Mm -hmm. But we've been trying to heat and condition the building since we bought it. Um, Hetty or Robin, do you have any questions? Um, I don't think so. I mean, only a philosophical question of um, when we start getting into this time period, I'm curious what other uh, what other folks on the commission think about um, about significance issues around just this era of, of building, not necessarily this particular property. It's just more of a philosophical question. Mm -hmm. It's a good question, Robin, um, particularly when you look at the way the house is sited on the lot and the way in which um, the contractor or architect or whoever built this little ranch um, thought very carefully about how to use the drop in the, the land to absorb the garage in this configuration that we're seeing right on the screen right now. I mean, these little ranch houses were built for the motor car <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, you know, are very much of their era. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and many people in the Northeast would give their eye teeth for a little house like this. I'm just curious to know why the owners didn't have anyone living there when they acquired it. Um, well, Ben pointed out that there's uh, significant septic tank issues so it didn't pass the um, inspection for the septic. And we explored over the first few years of owning the house, what it would take to hook up um, the system to the town waste line. Mm -hmm. um, and in exploring that with the town, there's issues about it being a shallow septic, I'm sorry, a shallow um, waste line at the end of the cul-de-sac. And so attaching to it um, is more complicated for this house, which is why it was the only one on the street to have a septic tank. Um, so we were exploring options to do so, but since we weren't able to resolve the issue, no one could live in the house. Got it, thank you. And was there no insurance for? There was insurance, um, but they uh, didn't cover this incident. So uh, there was like a clause with um, burst pipes just being that the uh, furnace was checked on at a regular enough interval for their uh, liking, which um, when we reviewed the oil bill, it was, you know, we realized that although it was automatically running uh, in prior years, uh, you know, it had gone like a, at least a few weeks be between being monitored and that must have been when the incident happened. So. Uh, yeah, unfortunately not covered and as we would have hoped, but. Okay.
Okay, um, so let's see, are there, if we can accept public comment uh, on this application at this time, if anyone uh, wishes to do so. So for those who wish to make a public comment, you can either click the raise hand button, or if you're on your phone, you can uh, dial star nine and that will indicate a raised hand. Doesn't look like it. Jim. Okay. All right, then um, I'll ask for any final comments or questions from members of the Historical Commission um, or town staff. Um, Jane, I have a question and this relates to any property before us. Is there any, do you have any sort of formal process for um, salvaging from a building before it's demolished and have we ever Put a requirement on the building that that happens. Um, I I believe that we have made that a condition in the past uh, that the owner make that attempt. Okay. Do we have any salvage people that we work with regularly, or <coughs> we just leave it up to the owner? Well, I know that for uh, for properties of a certain period or style, um, I think there is a uh, there's a lumber salvage place, um, you know, that we brought in. I think, or at least consulted for the barn on uh, on uh, just off of Montague Road mm -hmm. in North Amherst. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so that's one, uh, and I'm not, I, I don't, off the top of my head, don't know of others. Um, okay, so uh, we can, I think probably it's most efficient as we work through these uh, four to go ahead and close the hearing and then do the review uh, as I indicated earlier. So is there a motion to close the public hearing? I make a motion that we close the public hearing. And I second. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see, all in favor, I'll just ask quickly, Pat? Yes. Robin? Yes. Hetty? Yes. And Jane, yes. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll take these in, in sort of four groups. One is um, whether this property is listed on or is within an area listed on the National Register of Historic Places or is the subject of a pending application for such a listing. Um, and uh, Ben, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the answer to that is a no. That is a no, correct. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, looking at the screen uh, under historical importance, does any member of the commission want to um, want to cite any of the criteria as a reason for indicating that this is uh, that that this building does have historic importance or significance? Um, I will just read them because there are people on the phone who can't uh, see. I, I, we don't have to go through them one by one, but I think I should just read them out okay. loud. Mm -hmm. So the criteria are, uh, has character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town of Amherst, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, or the nation, or is the site of a historic event or is identified with a person or a group of persons who had some influence on society or exemplifies the cultural, political, economic, social, or historic heritage of the community. I always uh, get stuck. I mean, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards social. 
social heritage. Anyone else? Me too. <laughs> okay. The, the idea is that it seems to exemplify post-war, post-World War II uh, construction right. and making houses available to people in that era. Um, but it, it, it doesn't appear to have specific historic, to me, um, value. Okay, so if that's the only item under historical importance, um, let's let's vote on historical importance. Um, so, um, Pat, I would say no. Okay, Robin. Uh, yes. Okay, Hetty. Yes. Okay, and um, I will say yes. Um, all right, so that takes care of that group. Architectural importance. Um, the structure meets the criteria of ar architectural importance if it portrays the environment of a group of people in an era of history characterized by a distinctive architectural style or embodies those distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type or is the work of an architect, master builder, or craftsman whose individual work has influenced the development of the town or contains elements of architectural design, detail, materials, or craftsmanship, which represents a significant innovation. Again, I'm gonna say yes under uh, 4110. Okay, portraying the environment of a group of people in an era of history characterized by a distinctive architectural style. Okay. Um, I, I would agree with that. Okay, so we, let's go um, take the vote on architectural importance. Um, Pat? Uh, yes, 4110. Okay, uh, Robin? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Hetty? Yes. And I agree, yes. Um, finally, geographic importance. Um, these criteria are uh, that the site is part of or related to a square, park, or other distinctive area, or that the structure as to its unique location or its physical characteristics represents an established and familiar visual feature of the neighborhood village center or the community as a whole. Any comments? No, I'm okay. both counts. <laughs> yeah, I think I think this is a very interesting location. Um, the three roads together, Memorial, Hillcrest. Of mm -hmm. course, I'm forgetting the third one, but they're all built on the edge of a golf course and have been changed over time. I'm sorry that these guys have dealt with a septic issue that, but I think that's sort of part of the interest of what has been created here in, in the past in town, which is a, a set of three roads that are cul-de-sacs next to a golf course that represent a kind of subdivision that is typical of the Northeast of the United States in that time period. Um, so let us, uh, let's vote on geographic importance. Um, Pat? I would say yes, given the, the concept that Hetty presented. Um, it, it was a created neighborhood post-war. Uh, Raman? Still gonna say no. And Hetty? Yes. Okay. And I'll say no on that one, which means we're in a tie, but uh, because of the other two areas of historical importance and architectural importance, um, this results in a finding by the commission that um, it's a significant structure uh, as a post-war period um, uh, house. Um, so then uh, at this point, uh, 
we need to discuss uh, whether to allow the demolition permit application to to go forward or or what um, other options the historical commission wants to exercise. Um, so comment. Well, this gets into the territory of preferably preserved. And I'm, I'm going to guess that it's lack of, it's not, it's not some, it's not a, an extremely rare structure. Therefore, um, that's one argument against uh, aggressively preserving it. I'm not sure that given the condition that it's in and, and um, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious what, to think what other people think. I mean, I find myself leaning more towards preserving it as just because it's it's a shame to lose. <laughs> it's a shame that, that it's a shame that that that, that accident happened. I guess I'm trying to get my sentimentality out of that area. I guess the uh, <clears throat> just visiting the the criteria that we have for preferably preserved is described vaguely, but generally it's you know that the loss of the structure would be detrimental to the historical and architectural heritage of the community. So that's kind of loosely the right, right. Thank you for that. Yeah, criteria. then I would say that it doesn't meet it doesn't meet that bar. Right. Um. I, I myself agree with that, that it, it, it doesn't meet that standard. Um, uh, I'd be interested in um, comments from Hetty or Pat. I'm very pleased that you live next door um, and that um, you've brought this to our attention and that I think you have a sense of the sort of long-term options, you know, that it could still be a, a building there or it could be not a building there. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in the way you're thinking about, about the, the actual site. Um, you know, there are lots of little ranch houses like this <laughs> all over the Northeast, uh, all over Massachusetts. So um, I feel like it would be better to preserve it if possible. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I think that's all as, as much as I'm gonna say right now. I, I agree that it doesn't meet the bar, but I think the loss of, of a period post-war house is, would be unfortunate. However, I think we need to, to um, adhere to our criteria in any decision we make. Um, are we ready for a motion? Uh, yeah, so uh, I would move that we allow the issuance of a demolition permit. That's the right motion to make. <laughs> that one sounds yeah. pretty good. <laughs> so I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Um, all in favor, uh, Robin? All in favor, aye. Okay. Pat? Aye. Hetty? Aye. Jane? Aye. So the uh, commission uh, well, that is accepts the uh, demolition permit request. So um, we thank you for coming and um, presenting this uh, property and and some of its history and unfortunately some of its problems. Um, but uh, Ben, do you want to say what next steps are? 
Yeah, essentially, um, you filed for a demolition permit application with the building commissioner, um, and now the historical commission has weighed in and a, a, a approved of the demolition permit. So I will transmit that finding to the building commissioner and uh, authorize uh, the building department to issue the demolition permit. And so you know, there's going to be other steps uh, in terms of uh, finding a contractor, getting the utility shut off, uh, and uh, you can work that out with the inspection services department. Um, so, but as far as the historical commission is concerned, that uh, this can move forward for demolition. So Great. thanks again for taking the time to present. Yeah, and thank you all for your thoughtful consideration of it all. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Um, so let's see. Next, the second demolition permit request is for, uh, for 20 Ball Lane. Uh, this is parcel 5A56. Uh, Carl and Theodore uh, Matisco. And it's uh, for demolition of a former automobile and truck repair garage and farm stand. So wondering if uh, the applicant or representative is here and wishes Correct. to. Yeah, so um, let's see if uh, I see a raised hand here. Um, let's just see if this is the applicant. So we're looking for Matusko and if Roy Johnson is here, um, he can raise his hand as well and I can add you to the meeting. Oh, you know, sorry about that. Um, I've never been on a Zoom meeting quite like this. I've been on a lot of Zoom meetings. So um, this was an auto uh, truck repair building. Sorry, can, uh, just to interrupt, sorry, quickly. Can you introduce, your, introduce oh, yourself? Yeah. <laughs> My name is Roy Johnson. I work for Jones Group Realtors, oh, okay. and I represent, um, it's really Ted and Jim Matusko, uh, the family. Uh, Carl has since passed away uh, many years ago. Uh, but the uh, building uh, was a truck and auto repair. It's now <clears throat> out on 116 in Sunderland. It's called uh, MTR, Matusco Trucking and Repair. So I think they were asked to leave because it does, didn't really fit quite into the neighborhood. Uh, Stan Zomack lived right at the end of Ball Lane. So I think there was some, something to do with that. But <clears throat> the building needs to come down because it's unsafe. I'm, I'm concerned it could fall on somebody. I won't even go inside the building. Uh, I went there one day and I think there could have been, I don't know, but there might've been a homeless person there because I saw food on the loading dock. So I'm very concerned for that reason. Plus when I looked at the significance, I don't think there's any historical or cultural importance to this building. Uh, they've moved on to another part. Um, I had my uh, inspection done there, but it's not going to affect me on the cultural or the historical part. The architectural part is just like, you know, it's, it's like a old Butler building with, I think it's got shingles on the outside, a metal roof that's caving in. Um, and then as far as the geographic importance, I think it'll be a much better site without that building there. And that's 20 Ball Lane. That's a, a very large building. And I think Ben's going to show us pictures. But also on 20 Ball Lane is a old farm stand that um, they actually have an address on, on there called uh, it's 190 Montague Road for Postal Services. And that was a farm stand converted into a uh, place where migrant workers could live three months of the year. And it's I've been in it's not suitable for living. There's no way I would let any any of you live there, um, it was disgusting. And that really should come down. And I don't know of any historical or cultural significance that it would have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, ben, do you have um, comments or photos? Yes, I can uh, show photographs. So this is the application.
So this is a uh, 63 Montague Road. Um, and these are the three structures uh, pr proposed to come down. Tw 20 ball lanes not coming down. 20 ball lane, not coming 20 down. ball is, I'm sorry, the one over here on the right is 20 ball lane, there's a slab and a farm stand. Yeah. Okay. So this one is, and that's 40 ball lane. Yeah. Okay. So it's just the farm stand and the slab? And, uh, and 20 ball lane. I, I mixed it up. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Gotcha. And so this is just a concrete slab. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The building was already taken down. Gotcha. Oops. Here, let me uh, try to rotate this view. This is where I found uh, wood, food and people. I think somebody might have been living there. So that's a big concern. And then this is the farm stand. Used to be used as a farm stand because they grew, uh, they had acres of vegetables, a lot of vegetables they used to sell there. When was the last time, well, I pass that every day and um, I believe it, it was occupied until recently. Yeah, I think somebody's been out there for about six months, but um, they thought that it would require so much more money uh, to bring it into uh, livable. And uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, it, you'd have to go in, Jane, to see it's, it's disgusting. I don't know if you could ever get the smell out. It's on a slab. Uh, it, to, to bring it up to a livable uh, condition would be tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, I, I believe it. But I think my concern in hearing you talk about how uh, it, its condition indoors is um, who has been living there recently, because there have been a lot of, you know, until last year or a little bit before that, there were a lot of children's toys out next to the house. And that is I, I, rather concerning. I think there was a gentleman um, that lived there that had children visiting him. I, I don't know if they lived there or not. I, I was in there and I think I was inside for 30 seconds. I had to leave. Mm. Mm. I, I didn't know what I would catch. It was like, you know, when you walk into a house with it just was mold and infested. It was like, I just felt that I was going to get sick if I stayed there another second. So I, I walked out mm. and I was in there. That's the only time I've ever been in. That was about five, six years ago. Wow. Um, do, do, what's the extent of the of the property? Does it go up to uh, the property? Eight point three three acres. Okay. It goes all the way up to Pulpit Hill. Yeah. Okay. We sold uh, just for your information. We sold off one lot, and they built a um, high high end energy efficient. They're off the grid, up to the right. That's what we'd like to see coming down Pulpit Hill. Some really energy efficient homes. Mm -hmm. built there and we have some people that are interested but 20 ball lane is a pretty bad eyesore plus boy if children moved into the neighborhood here and came in here i'd be very concerned i wouldn't want any children even close to that building let alone you or myself um are there questions from other commission members What year is the 20 ball lane again? This building, the it's somewhere in the 50s. Is that, is that what you asked, Robin? Yeah, yep. yeah. I think it was in the 50s. I, I have it, I can go on to public record, but it was more than 50 years ago. So that's why we're here today. Yeah. I know I had my, my car inspected there more than 30 years ago. That was the place to go if you wanted to get it passed. I remember that. <laughs> I had mine done there too. <laughs> If you didn't have much money. I have a question about um, what the property is contiguous with in terms of land. It looks to me like it's really close to the Mill River. And is it on the Norman Juster Trail by any chance next to it? I don't think there's a trail because I've been up in the uh, Ellsworth barn and, and I'm not familiar with that trail, uh, Hetty. But uh, across the street, there is a, a stream, uh, but that's on the other side of Pulpit Hill. 
there is some wetlands way, way in the back <clears throat> um, off the property. You'd have to go, uh, the land actually goes way back, back up. This is right off of Ball Lane. I know this neighbor in the corner here, he would love to see these buildings down. The person that built the house up on Pulpit Hill actually had it in the contract that it would come down within uh, uh, one year, but that came out of the contract because the attorneys didn't want to have it in there. But uh, I've, walk, I've walked this area behind the, the rec center and the pool and everything, right? I mean, I think so, but maybe... <laughs> Maybe I've got myself turned around here on Google Google Maps. Isn't it a little bit south to south of. Okay. I think it might be um, the uh, Frost yeah. Trail. What? That's east of there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the uh, Puffers Pond Trail was that the one you're referring to? That goes through the Mill River, but I I know they sold some land and three homes got built on Summer uh, Street. Um, I think Shaw Perry built three homes in there. And then, so I think it's all private land going into this land. I I walk a lot of trails. I've never seen a trail going into the, and I've never seen anybody walking the property. I've been there quite a bit. Okay. I think I, I think I'm, I'm looking at the wrong bit of the Mill River. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just looking at where it's, I haven't driven down the end of Ball Lane. I do know the new buildings on Summer Street um, that you're talking about. And I, I really love this part of Amherst. Um, and I think a lot of other people do too. Yeah, I live in North Amherst. Yeah, it's beautiful. I go up, uh, you know, all the time up Pulpul Pulpit Hill and then I cross over so I can take a look at the falls because that's the only way you can go now. You know, it's one way, right. but it is gorgeous. And I think if these buildings come down, it'll look even better. <laughs> okay um thank you are there other questions comments by commission members also just wanted to recognize that jan uh did join us hi jan hi i'm sorry hi. i'm late um, i hope it wasn't a problem no no glad you're here Okay, this, yeah. looks, this looks fine to me to come down. I'm from, I've been through, I think, most of the conversation. Then um, let's um, hear any uh, public comment, if there is some. Uh, and Ben, I think you're able to. Yeah, so I'll, um, we have three raised hands. Um, let me, I'll first allow, recognize Meg Gage allow her to talk. Hi Meg, can you hear us okay? Yeah, I hear. Can you hear me? Correct, we can, yep. Great, thank you. Um, thanks everybody for serving on this commission and um, I really appreciate all the work you're doing. Um, I live, my husband Steve and I live across the street. I don't know if you can see my cursor, no, over there. We live across the street on Montague Road and we also own the house across the street on Pulpit Hill Road that's to the north of this property. Um, I have to confess, it's hard to see how this uh, building is aligned with the standards for significant structure as Jane described, but I have to share because I don't know where else to do it. Alarm in the community, in the neighborhood about the brownfields problem under this site. Mm. There have been various uh, offers to buy the land and very close to final negotiations. But according to federal law, the sellers are obligated to clean up brownfields and the Matuscos were unwilling to uh, sign a purchase and sale w w that obligated them to that. And um, I'm very concerned that um, many of us are that while these buildings are an eyesore and, uh, uh, you know, it's hard to, as I said, I can't understand. This is the only place I know where to make these comments is in this, because I haven't heard of any other hearings, but um, they're selling off the little lots along Pulpit Hill Road, which then what are they gonna do? They tear the building down and they're gonna probably, I don't know, we just don't trust that they're gonna be able to, uh, that this will ever get cleaned up. And by the way, there were kids last year getting off the school bus. They actually lived in that house. It's really horrendous, but um, I'm just, um, anyway, this, that's my comment. Thank you. 
And if there's a better place to make this comment, a better commission, because it's really hard to see how this is historically significant building, but um, uh, I will make, I'll make that comment in the right place. But I really appreciated getting the little card in the mail about this hearing. Thank you, everybody. Can I respond to that? Because wait, you're not supposed to respond. I don't think. All right, respond, yeah. and then I get to respond to you, right? <laughs> well, we nope. We're um, we're just going to move on to the next public comment. Okay, great, and, I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Okay. I thought you might want the facts. Can we? Uh, let's hear all of the public comments, and then we'll ask you for additional information. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. So I'm um, recognizing Lyons Witten. Um, good evening. Hi, good evening. So I'm Could Lyons Witten. Uh, yeah, yes, thank you. I'm Lyons Witten. I am at a butter to the north. I live in a co-housing community on Pulpit Hill Road. Um, and I was also uh, an interested buyer of the property uh, in the last several years. I've walked through all the buildings um, and I have to agree with uh, Meg that I don't see any historical significance to any of the structures. And I agree with, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with Roy that the property would be a lot safer if um, the buildings were demolished. Um, my concern has to do with environmental issues at the property, um, particularly with, um, there's at least one floor drain inside the, the large structure 20 ball lane. And there are two floor drains in the slab that used to be the old truck garage. Um, my concern is if the demolition permits are granted, I, I don't care about the buildings themselves coming down, but if the slabs are removed, then the location of the floor drains will be hard to find later and hard to um, conduct proper environmental assessment and cleanup. So, uh, and again, I don't know where else to make this comment in a public hearing in town, so I came here. Um, but if the commission uh, saw fit, I think it's appropriate to pass that information along to the building department um, and let the building commissioner uh, decide whether the slabs themselves could be removed prior to um, determining if there is or isn't an environmental issue there. Um, my profession is looking at properties like this and doing assessment and doing cleanup. So I, I'm, um, I'm very clear on what I see and the potential for a problem at the property. Uh, and I tried to negotiate that with the Matuscos and work it out. We weren't able to do that. Um, but I also see that if the slabs disappear, that uh, redevelopment of the property could happen without anybody really realizing that there's an environmental issue or someone coming in to do environmental assessment and not knowing where to look because the slabs are no longer there. So that's my comment. Okay, thank you for your thank comment. You. Thank you. There is um, another hand, uh, Tom. Yes, hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Would you mind identifying yourself for the record, please? Absolutely, uh, my name is Tom Crossman. Um, I have a small property management company in Amherst called Crossman Properties. And, um, and uh, I also tried uh, living in the farm stand for about six months. Um, so um, I don't have kids, so it was the previous, uh, uh, um, occupant that had, uh, children visiting and, um, he, it was his grandchildren that visited. Um, <clears throat> I think, um, I think the Matuscos are making an effort to improve the, uh, the property by, uh, submitting a, a, um, 
request for demolition um, of the property. Um, I do not know if everybody realized that there had been some cleanup done after the uh, demolition of the first uh, garage in 1998. They actually <clears throat> removed um, contaminated soil from that part that um, property. So there has been some um, uh, environmental cleanup uh, already executed at the property. So um, to the to the behalf of the Matuscos, um, they they have not uh, completely ignored um, uh, uh, the conditions of the property and have made efforts in the past. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, uh, from a real estate perspective, um, these buildings have kind of uh, uh, exceeded their um, rather they they breached functional obsolescence. So um, there's really um, <clears throat> not a uh, a way to um, use these properties in the condition that they are, and the the cost of remedi uh, repair um, uh, would be pretty significant. And um, and then you'd still have an, an old building that has kind of um, expired its its uh, normal use. So um, I just wanted to speak to some of those as a, uh, a a somebody who deals with real estate on a day to day basis, and then somebody familiar with this property to make sure that people understand that um, the Matuscos have been doing cleanup at the property and, um, and this property would uh, benefit significantly from the removal of those two, two existing buildings. Okay, thank you for your comment. Um, um, Roy, would you, would you care to yeah, make I would, comment? I would love to. So there's a, a whole set of attorneys that have been involved in this process. And when I took over the project, um, I had suggested doing what they call a 21E. That's what Lyons and that's what Meg was referring to. A 21E is three different phases. We uh, brought in Alan Weiss to take a quick look. Uh, he does the same thing that Lyons Witten does. And uh, Alan came in and said, uh, looking at the uh, records, you know, it looks like the fire department's cleaned up the oil tank that was outside. Uh, it, it was so long ago that the building uh, has been uh, left empty that the odds of finding something would be very slim. However, they would do a phase one, which was a couple thousand dollars, a phase two, which they would dig holes uh, to see if there was any uh, soil contamination. And uh, Alan didn't think that they would probably need to go beyond that. So we did get an offer and um, the, uh, the attorneys, uh, let me back up. The attorneys said, you know, whoever buys it through a bank is going to have to have their own licensed site professional, their own LSP. So why would we want to spend the money with our LSP if we're going to have to have it done again? And so Lyons was going to do that. The, the crux of the matter was we had given Lyons the whole property, a very good price. And he said he would do it. And then the uh, uh, Matusco said, OK, we'll give you up to $50,000 to do it. And they couldn't come together on an agreement. And so it's amazing how much misinformation is out there. I mean, the world, look what happened to, to our political system. Uh, and that's why I thank you for letting me to explain this. The Matuscos want to do everything right to clean this up. As Tom said, they've done everything in the past right. They tore the building down when the town asked them to. These buildings need to come down for safety. Uh, and, I, and I hope the commission understands that there's no importance on any of those significance. And once the buildings are up, uh, anybody that comes in and buy it, buys it is going to need to do a 21E and we will make sure they do it. Rob Morrow will make sure they do it. Everybody's on board to have these buildings down and to do it the right way. Okay, thank you for, um, for that comment and for that clarification. Um, I think, I mean, while uh, I understand th that there are environmental concerns, um, I think that is getting a little far afield of what the historical commission is able to do. And um, uh, so I think um, if, I think maybe we should move on to our consideration and 
Ben, if there is information you have about process, you know, going forward with the building commissioner um, about these concerns, um, you can, you know, let us yeah, know. Yeah, you know. yeah, definitely. I, uh, I was not aware of the background with this property, um, but I would encourage members of the public who are concerned to either reach out to the building commissioner or uh, con also the conservation commission might um, come into play as well for because it is close to um, wetlands as well. So that would be the better uh, avenue or forum for th this type of discussion. Okay. Um, and we can return to this concern after uh, after our own deliberation about um, significance. Um, so let's see, could I have a motion to close the public hearing on this for this property? I make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay, so thank you, Pat. And thank you, Jan, for the second. Um, so we'll uh, just sort of formalize that with a vote. Um, Pat? All in favor Yay. of yes. closing the, yeah, okay, yes. thank you. I um, got lost there for a minute. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hetty? I'm afraid you're muted. I'm sorry, I muted myself. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, Robin? Yes. And Jan? Aye. And uh, Jane, yes, I vote to close the public hearing. So um, Jan, we're doing our, uh, because we have so many uh, demolition requests this evening, we're, we're going through the criteria a little bit differently. So we're just sort of grouping them as historical importance, architectural and geographic. Yeah, we've done that before, it works well, yeah. thanks. Good. Okay, uh, but because there are participants on the, on the phone, we'll probably just quickly um, read the criteria and then have, a, you know, have any comments uh, that members wish to make about that, about that general category. Uh, so to begin with, um, let's see, first criterion is whether the property is listed on or within an area listed on the National Register of Historic Places or is the subject of a pending uh, uh, application. And I believe the answer to that is no. Uh -huh. Okay, um, next is um, a collection of uh, criteria concerning historical importance. Um, does the structure have character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town of Amherst, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, or the nation? Or is, the site of an, is it the site of an historic event? Or is it identified with a person or group of persons who had some influence on society? Uh, or does it exemplify the cultural, political, economic, social, or historic heritage of the community? So um, open to comment from commission members. I would say no on all counts. Me too. Yeah, there's no historical importance in my opinion. Even economic, I mean, it's just not in good enough shape anymore to suggest a bygone era of, <laughs> you know, development in the town. Agreed. Um, uh, architectural importance. The structure meets the criteria of architectural importance if it portrays the environment of a group of people in an era of history characterized by a distinctive architectural style or embodies those distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type, or is the work of an architect, master builder, or craftsman whose individual work has influenced the development of the town, or contains elements of architectural design, detail, materials, or craftsmanship, which represents a significant innovation. I would say again, no. No, again, I would say there is no distinguishing architecture, architectural style. No. No. Jan, can you just speak to um, our discussion about the Bertucci's building, which was a garage, and this one? I'm just trying to figure out how to, I mean, I recognize the condition that it's in. Um, I don't know if condition is supposed to weigh on our uh, ideas about what is significant or not, but I think you and I both agreed that the Bertucci's building was significant, and I'm trying to figure out how this would be different. Yeah, I thought of it actually as we were reading that and I was answering, I, I think 
one of the big differences is that that building um, did have a, a specific architectural style of an era um, and represents a particular time when those kinds of buildings were going into downtown. And this is more of a, a kind of frame structure thrown up in, in what would now we would call a pole barn style, really. It okay. wasn't designed, whereas the Bertucci's building, when it was built as a garage, it was, that was a very classic look for a garage. And it was, uh, it looked, to me, it looks like um, a type I was very familiar with, for instance, in Los Angeles during that era. You know, it, it just, it was- Right, there are others around town too. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I, know what you mean. I don't see this one. Um, of that quality, first of okay. all. Okay. I mean, maybe you don't agree, so feel free, but. No, no, I was just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm learning as I go along here. And it's just like the materials are higher quality, the size, the, the way the windows are done, the mm -hmm. entry base, mm -hmm. you know, all of it was just more carefully, to me, um, constructed for its purpose. And there's nothing distinguishing about this building we have under discussion. I don't think so. What are your thoughts on that, Jane, that question? Um, I, I accept Jan's description of the, of the differences between the two. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, um, the, the building that's still, if it's the, the, the garage building on Ball Lane, mm -hmm. um, that seems a completely undistinguished structure. Um, so, okay. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, finally, uh, the structure meets the criteria of geographic importance if the site is part of or related to a square, park, or other distinctive area, or the structure as to its unique location or physical characteristics represents an established and familiar visual feature of the neighborhood, village center, or the community as a whole. Does it sound like it any longer has any positive reference as a visual feature? I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Hetty, any comment? Yeah. It, it, it seems to me that if I could walk back to the 50s and stand on the little bridge um, just before the wreck, the pool, and on the beginning of Montague Road, that it would be possible at some point in history to see this as something much more coherent and not distinguished, but coherent as, a, as an aspect of North Amherst's development. Um, but I agree, it's hard to find it um, in its present state. Yeah, the only, the only one of the three elements of this application that I can see, and as I mentioned, I go by there every day, is the, is the, the farm stand building. Um, and so the 20 ball lane is not really even visible unless you go back there. Hmm. Well, you can see it from Pulpit Hill. Okay. Um, all right. So sounds like we are agreed that uh, the building doesn't meet any of the required criteria, uh, which means that the demolition permit can move to its next step. Um, Do we have an official vote, Jane? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry about that, yes. Um, uh, is there a motion? I move that um, recognizing no criteria of importance applied to these structures that we grant permission to the building commissioner to issue a demolition permit. Second? Second. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? And um, I will begin with Jan. Yes. Uh, Robin. Aye. Pat. Yes. Hetty. Yes. And I vote yes also. Um, so question for you is as 
community members, uh, do we want to uh, suggest that the building commissioner pay particular attention to the environmental questions? Yes, and you know, I dealt with um, a property in Illinois that had been a former gas station, and I, I don't know if this is the same, but I thought the EPA had to um, investigate before anything changed hands or was changed on the property. So um, maybe that's included in these other analyses, but um, I imagine the building commissioner would know, but I thought you had to get the EPA in for review. Jan, I think you might be correct about that. And I, I think also Roy's comments about the fact that once the slabs are removed, it would be difficult to know where the drains were. And it might be a recommendation to, who said that. Yeah. to the building commissioner that if the, if the slabs are removed, that the, the places where the drains were be marked mm -hmm. clearly so that that area could be assessed. And I do think the EPA has to get involved or will get involved. Mm -hmm. Can I make a comment? Uh, I don't know what's appropriate or not. No, I, no I, I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, uh, so uh, Ben, do you wanna make a comment about the next steps? Yeah, similar to before, um, your demolition application uh, was submitted to the building commissioner. So uh, it's now authorized to move forward by the historical commission um, and assuming, you know, that you've met the other requirements in terms of the state building code, um, then the building commissioner can authorize the um, issue, the demolition permit and um, yeah, I think the the environmental questions are a little bit out of the purview of the historical commission, but certainly I don't fault anyone for bringing it up at a at a public forum here, and it's uh, certainly appropriate. Um, and I can include, you know, in the in my just email to the building commissioner a brief overview of the discussion that happened tonight. Yeah, if you would pass it along to him, I think we'll have done our job. Mm -hmm. Thank Great. you, Ben. Okay. Thank you, Ben. And thank you, Roy. We appreciate yeah, thank you to talk about this. Yeah. Appreciate you guys volunteering for this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So our third demolition permit request is for 599 East Levert Road, um, owned by Donna and Marvin Spence. Uh, for complete demolition of a uh, circa 1850 farmhouse uh, that has been a rental property. So um, is the applicant or representative uh, present? Um, Mr. Spence, I was able to bring you into the meeting as a panelist, um, but uh, I believe you're still on mute. So I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. And uh, hopefully... Hey. Um, yeah, Mr. Spence, um, would you like to make any comment about um, the property uh, or the application for a demolition permit that you submitted? Um, we're not able to hear you, so but you're not on mute. So I'm trying to figure out, is there anyone else um, here to speak on behalf of the 599 East Leverett Road application? Is there, um, can we think of another way to bring Mr. Spence in? Would it be? Someone else raised their hand here. Is he on Zoom or is it a phone call? There's there's a phone call coming in. Yeah, but I'm wondering if Mr. Spence is trying a different Sorry. method. Yeah. Um, 
All right, Ben, are you able to unmute the um, panelists? Um, I can ask them to unmute, but that's it. Okay. I'm actually, I'm looking in right now. How do you unmute a phone on Zoom? Yeah, you can unmute every, mute and unmute everyone if you're the administrator. You can mute my cat if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see Mr. Spence is unmuted. Um, are you able to hear us, Mr. Spence? Can you start your video so we can see whether you're there and are nodding or shaking your head? Is Mr. Spence on a computer or a phone? Yeah, that's what I had asked. No, I don't know. Um, I wonder, perhaps I wonder if we should go to the 462 Main Street and then come back while and then come well, back. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah, I will say just briefly for the for the person on the phone, I think if you press star six, that will unmute yourself. You can try that. There you so go. Okay. Star great. six. Can you hear us now? We can, yeah. yeah. Yep. Could you um, identify yourself, please? And then um, my name is Marvin Spence and my wife Donna. We own we own the property at 599 East Leverett Road. We've owned it for 42 years. It's kind of rental and it's in bad disarray, disrepair, and we like to take it down. Okay, thank you. Um Let's see, I know that there's been a site visit and Ben, do you have any other information that you'd like to add prior to a discussion of the site visit? Um, not that hasn't been covered in the application. I mean, it's a uh, it family structure uh, rented, rented, I believe they said since 1972. Um, it hasn't been occupied in a few years. Uh, let's see, we found it, the uh, year built is a estimate at 1850, um, but I believe that's fairly accurate. And um, at our site visit, we did see that the building is in pretty um, poor condition, um, both the interior and exterior. So I'm just trying to find the pictures here. Those must have been in a separate document, sorry. Um, and the, yeah, the electric has been disconnected as well from the building. Okay. Um, Jane, uh, do you want a little bit of a description from us or you want to wait till later from what we saw at the site visit or you want to wait? Um, no, I think this is a time for both the description, reflections on the site visit, and any questions for the owner. Okay, well, Hetty and Pat and I um, went inside and looked around the outside. It has, it, there's a one and a half story structure in the front that looks like it was original. It has the central brick um, chimney mask. Uh, would have had rooms on either side in a traditional, you know, kind of hall parlor style, but it has been changed a great deal over the years, broken up and uh, reworked. And then there are multiple buildings to the east that were added over time, a two-story structure and um, and then another one-story structure on a slab. He would, um, Mr. Spence said that they were being rented as two units. Um, but it's all in really bad shape, uh, both structurally and in the interior. So I agree with him that um, it was in pretty, pretty rough. Um, but we did, you know, look at the layout and look at the historical character, and there isn't much left. I I tend to agree with Jan. the The fireplace is is the most interesting aspect of what's left 
there now and a couple of old wooden doors in the interior, but, but it's really been stripped of historical significance. Over yeah, even the fireplace, some of the bricks have been replaced. So right. <laughs> that's not original. Okay. Um, yeah, so Pat or Robin? Did you? I'm Hattie, sorry, I didn't hear whether you had gone to the site visit or not. Uh, I visit? just commented, Jane. I was I was a site visit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was not. Then there's a bad. I'm getting a bad echo. Is anyone else? Yeah, it's from the phone call. Fair way to mute the phone call. Yeah, yeah, it happens when you when you use the phone sometimes. Yeah, we're okay. hearing what they're hearing delayed. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. um, I, I was not at the site visit. Okay. I was just going to quickly share images uh, of the structure. It's yeah. the west elevation. That's the addition to the east. Two additions, yeah. There's the front door of the original one and a half or whatever you would call that. I guess it's mm -hmm. sort of story. Mm -hmm. The chimney is falling apart. That, beneath that is a huge chimney mass, um, as you find in you know earlier 19th century. I, I, I'd say 1850 was being um, a little bit optimistic with the dating. Yeah. You mean you think it's a little older? I think a little older. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it structurally unsound in any way? Yes. Um, the, I mean, we didn't go down to the basement. I, I didn't want to walk through it because I didn't feel safe walking um, on stairs or through too much of it. It's it's pretty rough. Yeah, we could um, we could ask the um, property owners to comment on the structural issues. Yeah. Would, yeah. So, um, Mr. and Mrs. Spence, if you can once again, sorry, press star six to unmute yourself. If you have any comments. Nothing. Uh, uh, star six, once again, to unmute if. Yeah. Can you hear us? We can, yes. yes. Sorry about that. I'm in the cellar. Uh, it's got a lot of dry rot. Beetles and termites. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So why don't we now take public comment, if there is any? Um, Jan, Jane, could I um just could I say something just that's sort of out in left field again, maybe. Um, again, this, this property is charming and on the edge of Amherst and a really beautiful setting. And I, I feel, feel for the owners that they've rented and have had difficulties with some of the rentals um, and that they're dealing with a property that has a lot of issues going on. But I just read somewhere that no one in Massachusetts can buy a single family home for under $500,000. Um, and that, you know, the price of, all of our affordable housing is just kind of going in the wrong direction for um, our country and our inhabit, you know, our population. And I'm sorry that you feel that, that you want to demolish this rather than pick it up like you did, you know, a, a nearby property that you own that looks so beautiful um, and and kind of remake it because it's because it is um, a charming sort of setting um, with those grand trees and the lake below it. Um, it has many kind of bucolic properties and I think if this building was in a different town or setting or had a different history in terms of its evolution of, of decay, um, you know, we, we might be voting differently. So um, 
you know, I, I, I was happy that I made the site visit and glad that we got some information at the time about the, I think the foundation is unstable in that earlier part of the building. Um, so uh, I feel for you as owners um, of what you're sort of up against as well. Okay, thank you, Hetty. Um, right, I see no other requests for public comment. Um, so let's have a motion to close the public hearing. I so move. Seconded. Okay, thank you. And um, all in favor of closing the public hearing? Um, Aye. Pat? Aye, thank Aye. you. Hetty? Aye. Robin? Aye. Jan? Aye. And I. So um, unanimous, so the public hearing is closed. Um, so we'll go to um, our just reviewing the standards uh, for designation as a significant structure. And of course, the first one is um, whether it's part of a, uh, whether it's listed on the National Register or uh, is sub the subject of a pending application. And that would be it would be no. Um, so next is the set of um, uh, criteria for historical importance, uh, which will take as a group, whether it has the character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town of Amherst, the Commonwealth, or the nation, or is the site of an historic event, or is identified with a person or group of persons who had some influence on society, or exemplifies the cultural, political, economic, social, or uh, historic heritage of the community. In this case, I would say that um, the social and historic heritage of the community is represented by these types of houses in these locations. That doesn't necessarily mean that it can't be taken down, but I do think that it qualifies there. <coughs> Yes, true. I, I would agree with that as well. It, it seems like it might have been the, the central house to a, to a farmland. Okay. Uh, I would agree then. Okay. Thank you. So we that's a, a yes for historical importance. Architectural importance. Um, the criteria are that it uh, portrays the environment of a group of people in an era of history characterized by a distinctive architectural style emb or embodies those distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type or is the work of an architect, master builder, or craftsman whose individual work has influenced the development of the town or contains elements of architectural design, detail, materials, or craftsmanship which represents a significant innovation. Again, a 4110, um, it, it doesn't anymore because it's been changed so much, you can't recognize it, but the plan of this type of house was distinctive in that era. Um, it's just been lost through uh, modifications. I think that's well said, Jen. It's been lost. We 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 can we can we can see and envision its origins, but but it doesn't exist that way now, except for the exterior initial part of the building. Yeah. I mean, but you can tell that it was you know of a right. particular type of house from that era. That you know, if you wanted to dig deep, it's just it doesn't it isn't a good example anymore. You know, it shouldn't be retained as an example, for instance. Right. Okay. Um, Robin, do you have thoughts? Uh, yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Okay. All right, so that, that sounds like a no. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a no because I would have to say it no longer portrays. Yes, right. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> it's, Once it's, time. it's if wishes were horses, it would, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Um, then for geographic importance, uh, the site is part of or related to a square, park, or other distinctive area or the structure as to its unique location or its physical characteristics represents an established and familiar visual feature of the neighborhood village center or the community as a whole. No, it's no. Um, no. It, I think it fits better under 4100, the idea that it, you know, repeats it. So, so, I mean, 4, 4103, it represents the heritage, but it's not um, specific to this neighborhood. Or okay. Um, then uh, our review suggests that it meets the criterion of historical importance under 13.4100. Um, no, 4103. Oh, I'm sorry, 4103. I made the same mistake a second ago. I, I was Kind of just repeating what I. <laughs> 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 um, all right, so then um, we'll move on to considering um, whether it uh, uh, whether its removal would um, represent a um, a detriment to the interests, the historical cultural interests of the community. We need a, did, was that a formal vote? We need a motion. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, a, a motion uh, about whether to um, allow the permit. Okay, I didn't think we had a formal vote over its significance. Thus. Um, well, I think it, it stated like, although it meets the criterion of architectural importance, um, we don't okay. feel that that's, significant enough in this case to deny the application. So that, moved. <laughs> yeah, is that right, Jane? That's what yeah, you're that's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And a second? Second. Okay, so um, is there further discussion? Yeah. Make sure, uh, I guess we were concerned when we were there that um, Mr. Spence, that the um, trees in front, we hope you aren't going to take those down. They're absolutely beautiful and we hope you wanna keep looking at them from your house um, because that would be a greater loss to us than the structure. All right, so let us uh, vote on the motion. Um, if you are in favor, please so indicate. Um, I'll start with Hetty. Yes. Jan? Yes. Robin? Yes. Pat? Yes. And I vote uh, yes as well. Um, so uh, Mr. and Mrs. Spence, thank you for your um, application and for coming to, to uh, this hearing to talk about um, what you'd like to do with the house. Um, uh, your uh, demolition permit uh, has been, we, we've voted favorably on that and um, there will be other steps uh, that Ben has already described, but if you just wanna summarize quickly, that would be. Yeah, yeah, certainly. So the historical commission has weighed in and approved the demolition. Um, I've been corresponding with uh, Cheryl about this project, so I will get in touch with her and um, contact you with the uh, and let the building commissioner know that the uh, that the demolition permit can be issued for this property. So, thanks again for taking the time to join us. Thank you. Um, so our fourth demolition permit request is for uh, the the structure at four sixty two Main Street. Um, with uh, from owner John Robleski, uh, which is to demolish a roughly 1828 wood frame structure known as the JT Westcott House, which is on uh, in the, the state uh, database of historic structures um, that has most recently been used as an office building. So uh, Mr. Robleski is um, 
provided a number of documents assessing the condition of the structure from a variety of perspectives. And uh, Mr. Wilfred has shared his research about the building. So we have a good deal of information related to this application. Um, and if uh, Mr. Robleski uh, or, or other representatives would like to um, make comments, um, please do. I don't know if you can hear me, but I don't see the option for a video. Okay, hi John. Yeah, we can hear you. So in the uh, in the bottom left, um, if you have a camera on your uh, on your computer, yeah. um, in the bottom left it says uh, start video, um, and you can just click the button there. Yes, usually it does. I've been on Zoom meetings before on this computer, but. It only has mute oh, in the microphone. Yeah. Usually the video camera is there. So I don't know if you have to invite me specifically on the video. Yeah, Ben, did you set him up for a full panelist? Um, does that work now at all, John? Okay, there it is. Okay, there we go. There. Great, we got you. thank you. And um, <laughs> is there anyone else from your team here that you I should bring in? I see uh, Christine. Yeah, there we go. And then Christine and perhaps the uh, architectural engineer, John Wallen. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, thanks for uh, so much thorough information. Um, and would you like to make further comments? Yeah, I guess just give you a brief history. Uh, my wife and I are the sole managers of 462 Main LLC. We bought this property from Nancy and Paul Hamill in the end of November 2017. After that, came up with some plans uh, with the help of the architects and uh, went before the planning board and got approval to build the building that you saw under construction there now. And we also got approval from you folks last year to take down the garage that was in the back, uh, which we did, as you saw. Then uh, our intentions were to keep this, this building and try to rework it. And initially I thought that it was gonna be a fairly simple process to shim the floors up and get them to where they're somewhat level because as you saw, they drop like three and a half to four inches from south to north and east to west. The whole center of the building is kind of going down. Um, I didn't realize the extent of it until another builder looked at it a little while ago. And he said, you know, you better take another look at this structure. Uh, so we did, and that's where I decided that it just, even though my intentions were good and, and I really wanted to save the porch, you know, that look of the building, uh, which I did next door at 22 High Street back in the late nineties, we redid that home. Um, but that home didn't have the issues that are appearing in, in the structural portion of this building now. So we were able to do a lot of work to that building and there's you know, two nice rental units in there. Um, as you saw, the sill plates you know, on the west side are really in poor condition. Where I had that one section of board pulled out for you to that, what they call the capstones, which I didn't realize until Mr. Wallen stated that they're called capstones. Those are kind of tilting to the outside. And when you look at that hole that we saw down in the basement between the brick and the capstone, that's where the beam sits for the structure. And it's actually sitting on those interior bricks. So with all this decay that's happened, apparently it's pushing the capstones out as the bricks deteriorate and then pushing the bricks to the inside. And the biggest issue with the work they did back in around 1980 uh, was that when they put good beams underneath the bad beams that already were very decayed and didn't do anything with the floor there, kept it dirt, 
and with water running through there and so forth, the powder post beetles kept eating away at it. And so that top main original beam kept decaying and that's apparently causing a lot of that sagging and the engineer can maybe speak to that after I'm done. Um, it is listed in the railroad depot district. Um, the Mass Historical Commission uh, did an inventory of the homes along Main Street and along the railroad tracks that back in the day had a lot of uh, railroad employees and uh, things like that for housing and there are stores and stuff. So yes, I mean, my intentions were to absolutely save this and you just saw, I put a good amount of work into it already between the upstairs heating and air conditioning, electrical work, cementing the basement floor. I figured that would help with the uh, mold issue and so forth. Um, and also, you know, heating air insulation work I did. So it just come down to a decision that I really didn't want to make, but that's where we're at right now. Um, I did ask the building commissioner if they wanted to come and view this after I got the structural report. And, and they basically said they're going to defer to the architect and the structural engineers reports and rely on that versus them going out which I kind of figured they don't want to get into that position of you know, saying that, yes, it's a bad building. You need something from a professional to rely on. So when that inventory was done by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, that was in 1988. And one of the statements there, it says, this is one of the few remaining side gabled farmhouses in Amherst with flush boarding on the gable cornice trim. Uh, a related example survive in nearby Hadley. The spindle work wraparound porch dates from about 1890. So that was in 1988, and it says one of the few remaining at that point in time. And here we are, what, 12 or 30 something years later. So a lot of those homes that were of this architectural style were already gone in 1988. So work has been done to this. It's been probably not the best rehab work um, to kind of make it a usable office space in 1980. So that's when it became from a residence to a real estate office. Uh, so right now it's at the point where trying to put more money into it isn't going to help the structural issues and the structural issues are creating a liability for trying to rent it um, given the trip hazards with the floors the way they are, unevenness, slanted, the uh, low ceilings in the second floor. If we try to level those out and get them somewhat level, then we're well below the seven foot building code. And you have all the information from the architectural letter that uh, was received today and uh, the engineer's report. So although my intentions were very sincere and very well intended, I guess it just, I had to make that call and uh, this is the point we're at. It's just not worth putting that amount of money. And one estimate was 250 to $300,000 to get it to where it kind of needs to be structurally. And that's got to go all the way up through the building. So it means a lot of tearing apart and rebuilding and so forth. So that's where we are. And I would ask that you take that into consideration. Um, I know it has listed in the uh, railroad district and certain architectural features and it is what it is type thing, so. Okay, thank you for that uh, account. Um, do do uh, either of your colleagues want to make any comments? I can speak if you'd like. I'd like to just touch on the structural floor issue. Can everyone hear me? We can hear you, yeah. Uh, the floor, uh, the floor joists and the sills are all rotted to the point where the building has come down, not just in the center, but also on the outside. And it's down far enough where, where possibly the studs are actually touching the foundation and splitting the, the foundation apart. Um, 
and the difficulty, I've lifted some of these buildings, but usually there's a sill of some kind under it to be able to lift it up. And with this building, um, lifting it, there's nothing there to lift from is the real problem. And then the, the rest of the floor joists that connect to that sill are disconnected from it. So even if we had sills to lift from, the floor would have to come up. You'd have to put like a blanket underneath the whole building to try to lift it up. And it, it's very precarious. So um, they usually don't get this far. They, they usually will have, when, when the repairs were made, like sistering the joists up, usually they would have replaced sills while the building was still up. Well, well the elevation of it was still up in the air. Um, the difficulty that I see with this is just trying to lift it up. Um, we've done buildings where they've had sills in, in certain areas, maybe a little bit of it's rotted, and you can support the studs and put in a new sill and then jack it up. Uh, my fear with this building is that there's been a lot of siding that's been replaced on it. And I think that's been replaced because possibly the walls have been rotted too. Uh, and if the workmanship in the walls looks like it does in the floors, as you start taking apart those walls, you could have a collapse. Um, and the foundation is near collapse right now. So it's, 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 it's more serious than, than what I think uh, John had, had thought when he asked me to come and take a look at it. Um, it's pretty concerning. All right, thank you. Um, let's see. Ben, do you have any other information you want to share? Um, yeah, I guess I'll just say, you know, I think everything um, John and his colleagues have uh, provided a, a quite a bit of information in terms of architectural and engineering reports. Um, the, I do I'll just touch on the uh, history um, of from what I've been able to discern. And I'm just going to, uh, John was correct that it is <clears throat> listed as a, a contributing structure to the um, depot district, which is, uh, I don't believe that's not the National Register, but it's a, a mass historic um, recognized district in Amherst. The uh, Sorry, I'm on the wrong page here. I did, I was, uh, I worked with the uh, special collections in Jones Library to collect some information about the building. Um, and I can share that here as well. So the, um, this is the information about the owners of 462 Main Street. Uh, JT Westcott, Jared Taft Westcott was the original owner um, from 1850 to 1888. Um, he was a businessman in Amherst and uh, worked in the palm leaf hat industry in, in Amherst um, and was also um, the first president or the first director of the First National Bank of Amherst, um, which I think is the uh, now Amherst Works uh, in the center of town. Um, doo -doo -doo. Daughter of uh, Jared Westcott then uh, presumed ownership of the building. Um, James and Mary Harrington were owners from 1894 until 1942 when Mary's estate sold the property. And then um, more recently, uh, Michael and Catherine Garvey, owners from 1942 to 1980, and um, their son, Robert Garvey, you know, this is more, more recent history. Um, Robert Garvey was born in 1938. Um, he was a member of an Amherst Amher Select Board Hampshire County Commissioner and was the a very uh, long serving Hampshire County Sheriff from eight, 1984 to 2016. So that's who's kind of occupied the house over the years. And as um, Mr. Robleski said, I, I, uh, it's been used as an office building for the past um, decade or so, few decades? Not no, 40 years. 40 years, okay. Yeah. <laughs> And just looking through time, kind of uh, various different maps that uh, are available to us in special collections. Sorry about the resolution. It's not the best when you zoom in, but um, this is one of the first uh, maps of Amherst from 1873. 
Um, and you can see the railroad coming through town um, in this uh, building, the JT Westcott building placed here in a same orientation as it is now. And then this is an interesting picture showing a, a actual kind of drawing, a depict drawing of the building from 1886. You can see the uh, typical, you know, farmhouse style with the attached barn on the back. Interestingly, you can see in 1886, the porch wasn't quite the full wraparound that you see now. Um, so I'm not exactly sure when that was added. And here are the, uh, the Sanborn fire maps. They don't show you much in terms of architectural detail, just the dimensions, <coughs> but 1916, 1930, so. Looks like the wraparound porch started in 1916. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, that's um, kind of the additional information I have um, outside of the uh, the engineering and architectural reports that have been provided. Great, thank you. I always love looking at the maps. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, qu questions, comments from commission members. Any reflections from your uh, from our site visit? I think the reports that Mr. Robuski has provided to us really give us the information we need to appreciate the status of the building itself, and that's something that you need to have uh, specialist engineers and architects to um, identify. And those were very helpful for my understanding. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to go back to my question from earlier about architectural salvage in particular in relationship to this building and whether we want to discuss that at all. Robin, um, could I just ask if a point of clarification that no one would be willing to bet that we could move this house somewhere else safely, given what you were saying about the sills and the joists? Is that a question for the engineer? Yeah, it is. Because I think we need to consider, is yeah, that a possibility before we consider salvage? Yep, that yeah, makes sense. I can speak to that. Um, it, it would be very, very difficult to lift the building from a safety standpoint. Um, I think you would need to spend probably 10,000 just to find out if it could be done. Um, and if it could be done, it would be lifted by the second story is the only way I could see it could be done. But uh, it, it's moved so much that the chances are that a lot of the tenons are broken off on the inside of the post and beam structure. Um, it's just settled so unevenly that uh, I don't think that that's practical. No, it's definitely not economically practical for sure. Um, Thank you. Um, are there, so sort of picking up on Robin's question, uh, is there any material, I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of rot and, and framing members are, are not in good shape, but it, are there any items uh, I was noticing things like doorknobs and, of course, those beautiful windows out front. I mean, I don't know anything about architectural salvage other than how much fun it is to go to an architectural salvage store. And, and I don't, you know, I just wouldn't want to see anything that could be, um, you know, taken and reused somewhere else. You need to have the opportunity for that to happen. But I, again, I, I have no familiarity with any, that kind of process at all. So. I agree, Robin and I were looking at those three front windows in particular, they're a unique shape and um, a really beautiful example of that sort of 
window. Um, there's also things like the gingerbread on the posts and you know, various other features that aren't in too bad a shape that it would just be nice to have as historical artifacts to maybe incorporate into another building. Um, just in terms of salvage. As far as the rest of the building goes, um, I, I'm, I was really disappointed to see this come through because when we did the inspection of the garage, um, as admitted, um, you know, it was said that the, um, the building would be saved. And, um, sorry. And, you know, I completely understand after reading the reports and, and listening to all the presentations that it can't be, but it is a shame because it's one of those buildings that is um, prominent on a main street right out front where you can see it next to a similar building. Um, not as, not as um, high quality, I don't think, as the one next door, but um, it certainly has a distinctive character and it, it, it is a shame, but um, things happen and, and buildings deteriorate. So um, I understand, although, you know, it's very disappointing. My two cents. All right, I'm going to um, ask for um, any other final questions, comments from commission members, um, and then uh, I think we should ask for public comment. Okay, so why don't we move to public comment and see if there are, uh, are any um, participants who would like to speak. Uh, oops. I'll invite uh, Tom to make a comment. Is this still Tom Crossman? Hi, uh, good evening. Yes, uh, I actually did recently uh, uh, speak to the tune uh, for another property, but coincidentally, um, I know this property pretty well also. Um, uh, again, my name is Thomas Crossman, for the record. Um, I, uh, I'm from Crossman Properties. Actually, Crossman Properties is located at 462 Main Street. Um, we have been for a number of years. We were there before John uh, took over the management. Um, to speak to the to the building, um, you know, I'm, I'm a startup business in Amherst. And so um, finding a portable commercial space is a challenge. And so we actually started um, on the uh, north side of this building, a very small office, and uh, we were squeezed in there for a number of years. And uh, we benefited from that garage until we uh, were fortunate enough to outgrow that garage. Um, uh, so um, we eventually actually moved to the middle um, office in this building, and um, it's kind of a, an invisible enemy existed in the sense that we actually started to have some uh, some of our staff members were becoming a little ill. Um, I myself uh, experienced some um, respiratory uh, uh, symptoms that um, you know I I am in and out of the office, so I didn't exhaust too much time in the office, but. On the days that I was in there for an extended period of time, I um, the middle office is next to the doorway that goes into the basement. Um, so I the the stagnant air and the moisture from the basement uh, was impacting my my ability to breathe well. Um, so we actually moved to that front office space, and um, and uh, some at some point uh, John took ownership of the building. Um, I will speak to um, the care that Mr. Robleski has put into the building since he's taken ownership. And the previous owners cared too. You know, if I had a concern, they would respond. But uh, John has really gone above and beyond. Um, uh, one of the things, uh, refinishing that uh, floor, uh, improved the air quality. Um, it's, it's, it's not perfect, but it's significantly uh, improved from where it was before uh, John owned it. Um, and then, yeah, um, again, from the perspective of being in real estate and um, maintaining properties and, and managing properties throughout this community, um, I, I do notice that um, there's there's a number of elements of this building that are fatigued. Um, you know, they've, they've uh, exceeded their useful life. Um, we still feel um, for the short term that it's, uh, it's safe enough to function and operate out of, but um, in the... Uh, uh, longer term, we do have plans to leave the building. Um, 
Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I wanted to speak to the, and, and another note is, uh, um, you know, I've had uh, uh, multiple generations um, in this community. So I, I appreciate, um, you know, what this community offers and, um, and, uh, and, you know, some of these nice buildings, but um, being in the industry of real estate, I know that that buildings, you know, they, they actually become um, hazardous and, and sometimes it's an invisible hazard. And I think, um, you know, whether it's the, the physical structure or the air quality, whatever it may be, you know, um, it could lead to some problems down the road. Um, and I think that this particular building is, is heading in that direction. And um, I know that if John um, could find a solution for this, uh, he really has been in and out. He's communicated with uh, myself and my colleagues in, in my business. And, um, you know, he really has made changes. He's made improvements. But um, I, I trust that if, if he feels that it's uh, become too much of a burden, that he's, he's kind of, un, he's, he's turned over every stone looking for solutions for this property. Um, so uh, to the tune of 462 Main Street, um, uh, I think that it, it has lived its life on, uh, on Main Street. And I, I think that um, it would probably be in the best interest of um, our community that um, this uh, fatigued facility um, is uh, removed. That's my opinion and that's my public comment. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Um, let's see, there's, uh, it looks like uh, Hilda Greenbaum has a hand raised. To me, it's heartbreaking to see this building go because it's been always been one of my favorite ones. And I knew it was important in the Irish history of this town, but I just didn't have a chance to do as much research in the archives as Ben did. Um, I've restored a lot of houses with my husband over the years. And even my own house, which was sitting on four stones right on Montague Road, they were able to put dollies under it and pick it up by the timbers. And we replaced every sills. We have replaced the sills and, and put my house on a new foundation. Other houses replaced the foundation on, on easily 10 or 12 different houses. So it's hard for me to believe that this one would be so expensive to repair. My guess is that the old timers that knew how to do these jobs are no longer with us. So to me, I would love to have it saved, but it, and, and it's a heartbreaking story. And we always knew it as the Garvey house over the years. So if there were a way of saving it and finding the money to do it, I wish it would, but it doesn't look possible, I guess. They okay. just let it go too long. Hey, thank you for your comment. Um, are there any other members of the public who would like to speak? Okay. Um, then uh, let us have a motion to close the public hearing. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. Second. All right. Thank you. Um, in, if you are in favor, uh, please, uh, please so say. Um, Eddie? Aye. Jan? Yes. Pat? Yes. Robin? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes for me too. So, uh, so we'll now um, move to the standards for designation as a significant structure. And... Um, Let's see, um, we've already, we've already determined that uh, the structure is in a Commonwealth of Massachusetts um, district, but uh, not in a National Register district or is not, and is not a, a property on the National Register. Um, so then for historical importance, um, we'll look at these criteria once again. Um, uh, if the building has character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town of Amherst, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, or the nation, is the site of an historic event, 
is identified with a person or group of persons who had some influence on society or exemplifies the cultural, political, economic, social, or historic heritage of the community. I'm saying yes. I'm saying, I'm going to say yes too. I'm, I'm also saying yes. A little bit of every one of those things apply. I would say 4103 is the most apt once again, because right. it speaks to owners of the factories, um, historic heritage in terms of the structure, social heritage in terms of that strata of society, building houses along Main Street. Um, I mean, it kind of fits everything, whereas the 001 and 02 is more specific that I don't think it really fits. So. Agree. Yeah, I uh, 4100, I also think it fits that one. Um, so um, we can move on to architectural importance uh, that the structure portrays the environment of a group of people in an era of history characterized by a, a distinctive architectural style or embodies those distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type or is the work of an architect, master builder, or craftsman whose individual work has influenced the development of the town or contains elements of architectural design, detail, materials, or craftsmanship, which represents a significant innovation? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, Maybe is not four one one two because we don't know who the architect was, but otherwise, um, and I mean, significant innova innovation. It just depends on when that that style um, was built there, but certainly the first two. Yeah. Okay. For geographic importance, uh, the site is part of or related to a square, park, or other distinctive area the structure as to its unique location or physical characteristics represents an established and familiar visual feature of the neighborhood, village center, or the community as a whole. Oh, I, I would say yes. held spoke to 21. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Agree. Okay. Um, so let's see. Um, Uh, so shall we, uh, it meets the criteria of significance. Shall awesome. we move, a, a have a motion for a disposition of the application for a demolition permit? I hate to be the one to go on the record for this, but I always make the motions. <laughs> Was there any discussion? To Oh, we could do that after the motions made. But well, if yeah, if you want to discuss first, that's fine. Well, I would uh, ask for discussion around the idea of a condition of looking into the possibility of any salvage. Yeah, we can put that in the motion. Yeah, I would. I would agree with that, Robin. There's certainly a, a lot of the house has been stripped of important the interior but there certainly are are features that could be salvaged and re repurposed yeah i was really taken with the doors in, mm -hmm. in the interior of course mm -hmm. they're too small to be useful for if they need to meet a code of any kind, but um, well, but if somebody's restoring a historic home and wants closet doors or something, they would wear some of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, well, um, I can take a stab if you want, if we're ready. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, four sixty two Main Street has been determined by historical commission to meet all three criteria of uh, historical, architectural, and geographic importance. It therefore is a significant building. However, based upon its current conditions and the efforts of the owner, the best efforts of the owner to save it, 
um, it seems to be in too poor a condition to warrant further investment. The Historical Commission would like to add a condition to um, approval of the demolition request that every effort be made to salvage and repurpose any features that remain in good condition. Is that close? Very good, Jen. That's really yeah. good. That's second. <laughs> it's hard to remember where you started when you get to the end. Yeah, all right. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, I'll just say, I agree, this is sort of a heartbreaking circumstance. And um, I think, so I appreciate everything Mr. Robleski has done uh, for this building, including um, his attempts to interest others mm -hmm. uh, in it, which uh -huh. would, you know, if the, if the commission were to, um, were to to to, to um, invoke a demolition delay, I mean that that would be the thing um, we would be asking you to do, but you've already done it. Mm -hmm. So um, he's been through this process with us before. He knew right. what <laughs> well prepared. Yeah, yeah. So well, nobody else wants those front windows. I'll take them. <laughs> they're only a single pane. I know, but. You know, they don't have to be in a regular house. They're just wonderful. I'd build yeah. a garden house or something just to use them. <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know, I hope I don't go in the newspaper as being the commission member who called for demolition of a gorgeous 19th century building on Main Street. God, it's my worst nightmare. But <laughs> Well, one, can I make one comment about, you know, using, like I put in my letter there, if I did this next door where there was an old barn that, Again, I was going to repurpose the three-story barn and turn it into a two or three rental units and ran into the same issue there with the upper beams were really shot as well as the lower carrying beams. But I did save stones from the foundation of that barn and, and made a stone retaining wall at 22 High Street. Uh, made a sitting bench out of some of the wider stones. That's why I was thinking about what I could use the other day. And I put that in my letter that those capstones are really beautiful to use for sitting benches around the new property. Mm -hmm. And I think that way people can kind of connect with the past, you know, and have something that they can use type thing. And, and even for some of the bigger stones there and some of those flat stones, using them as a, a retaining area for some of the slopes I have there, I just... I like that idea. I don't know how you people see it. No, it's not so and the glass doorknobs. I like the glass yeah, doorknobs. Yeah. That's, That's what I want to have. I know there's those. Yeah, those yeah. are the ones Robin wants. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe does the Jones Library have something, Ben, that has some um, period material like that where they could actually have them on display or something? No, uh, yeah, in their current current in the current special collection space, uh, it's space is at pretty limited there. But um, it's definitely yeah. it would be worth reaching out. Or the historical society. Yeah. Society, yeah. 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 yeah, But that's yeah. why I was also thinking about the salvage stores, where you know, that I've been into, where they're just you know fabulous bins and bins of them. <laughs> so mm -hmm. let's go ahead and conclude the vote. Um, yeah. All in favor. Uh, let's see, Robin? Aye. Hetty? Aye. Hat? Aye. Jan? Sadly, yes. And yes, with grief, I, I vote aye. Um, I appreciate that. Um, and I, I hope you appreciate that. I really, really wanted to save it, but <clears throat> I say that it is what it is. And things change so but we saw the evidence of the work you've put into it recently yep. and not too long ago so we can appreciate that yep thank you thank well, you thank you for you know thank you for working so hard on this uh with us and and on your own and uh we wish you success thank you
I appreciate your time and your volunteering for sure. I know I was on a building committee, as I mentioned about the garage there for the town of Waitley and restoring a town hall there and spent a lot of hours, but you know, it's for a good reason and a good purpose and appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so next on our agenda is uh, Jones Library Historic uh, Preservation Restriction. So are we? Yeah, yeah, John. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. You are. You are all set. Um, we will. Uh, I'll follow up with the building department um, and uh, authorize the approval of the demolition um, as long as you meet. You're meeting the other uh, building code um, requirements okay. and all of that. So I'll okay. transmit. I'll transmit that and uh, keep you in the loop as well. In terms of the salvage requirement, what, how does that get followed up on? So um, that I, that I see as more of a, a, a strong strong recommendation by the historical commission to okay. John, but it wouldn't necessarily impact the demolition permit itself. Okay. Yeah, I think we're on the same page with that. So yeah. okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and if, if we can be any help, like whether it's, you know, me doing a little bit of legwork on it, or if you want to reach out to the Historical Commission to help find the right salvage yard or store or any, any, or any assistance, <laughs> and yeah, any assistance we can offer, we're, we're happy to okay. um, help with that. So Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Good night now. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, the library historic preservation restriction. Um, uh, do um, the folks need a break or do we want to just want to check in how we're doing? How much, how much longer do we expect this? <laughs> well, uh, so we have. We could, could go all night if we want to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I need a glass of wine if that's the case. Um, so let me, uh, yeah, I, we still have a lot on on our agenda and in fact oh good yeah we've already closed our public hearing so we don't have to do that but we have to open the public meeting um so mm -hmm. preservation restriction is probably something we want to get to tonight um then civil war tablet site visit west cemetery um headstone restoration planning is that how, how time urgent um, so the headstone restoration planning that could wait. I, we we talked about that at the site visit. I need to talk with the accounting department to figure out how to craft the RFP. So I, I don't really have any updates on that. Um, I think that there is some I, there is some urgency to the Jones Library historic preservation restriction. Um, I know Nate's been working on that on that for a while. Um, I actually, I really don't know much about where that process, um, but Nate, Nate's at the planning board meeting right now, so he wasn't able to come, but um, I also would love if we could approve the minutes so I can <laughs> finally post okay. those online. Yeah. Um, so let's see, it's um, 10 minutes to nine. Um, shall we take a quick break and then continue till about 9.30. What Sounds now? good. Okay. Sure. Yeah. All right, so three minutes. <laughs> 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 okay, we'll be back.
Then I uh, I put my historic picture of the town hall up to challenge you. Oh, there <laughs> you go. Nice. There. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, Robin. It looks great. It does look great. It's look great that you both have <laughs> pictures. Uh, you know, it... I found it in the um, when I was looking at the Sanborn maps a couple of meetings ago. All oh, right. The National Archives. I just put in plugged in Amherst and saw what came up. And oh, nice. Like, oh. That's convenient. I'm trying to look at those telegram lines in the back behind you where the, yeah. I'm not sure if it's electric or not. But. Mm. Yeah. But how, what date is that photo? Do you know? Well, I don't remember. I have to look it up again. Mm. Um, ben, would um, are you? Has Nate sort of briefed you on the preservation restrictions? Yeah, a little bit. Um, and you, you all might know more than I do, but my understanding is that they received um, CPA funds. So, and part of that agreement is. Um, accepting a preservation restriction on the property mm -hmm. and I know Nate Nate's been working on it over the past however many years um three two three years at this point and has had a lot of back and forth with the state with the Jones library um but it's finally at a point now where um and I guess there was also some uncertainty whether the local historic commission needs to accept it or sign off but um you mean the, you mean? The Amherst Historical Commission, yeah. Okay, and not the district commission. Not the district, no. Um, but that was clarified and there is a page here for the, um, look, the Amherst Historical Commission to approve of the restriction. Yeah, it's not current as to its membership. No. <laughs> So it's a 40 page document. Um, yeah. Goes into a lot of detail about the um, different activities that are allowed, the standards for review. Uh, enforcement. Um, yeah, I, I can't speak to the all the details contained within here. Um, um, I, um, I can call out a few things yeah. that I think are sort of the meat of it uh, or um, have some nuance to it that we should probably understand if you don't mind. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Are these, is this, this is an existing restriction? No, it's one that we need to, um, it hasn't been executed yet. So oh, the, but it's been quite a while ago? Yeah, it takes a long time to get these things done. I've, I've oh. been through this at the Dickinson Museum and it took it took two or three years to get it done. Oh, okay, I just yeah. assumed it was already, uh, it was already in place. Yeah, it, so, I, ideally it would have been. But, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you can see 2017, 2018. I mean, these yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so it's an agreement between between the library and the town of Amherst, and we're the we're kind of the I guess executive committee that acts on behalf of the town in this instance. And um, so a couple of things, you know, I'll just start on maybe page three with the purpose, um, just to note that um, the agreement assures that the features and characteristics that embody the architectural, historic and cultural significance of the exterior of the building will be forever retained and maintained 
substantially in their current condition. So this is this um, it impacts the exterior appearance and condition. Of, of the original part of the library, Jane. Right, right. Um, Except it doesn't really say that. And when I saw this, I was concerned that this could be used to block the new construction. You know, I wish I had highlighted there is a, let's see, I thought there was a, a little a, a kind of an allusion to what it covered somewhere in here, uh, but I didn't highlight it. Uh, I don't remember seeing um, it which, so fast. Yeah, um, on the first page, well, I'm not sure if this covers it or not, but in the in the um, the first whereas paragraph, mm -hmm. um, owner of real property, 43 Amity Street, described on a deed dated October 6, 1925. Uh, property is improved by a building constructed in 1927, 28. Um, uh, which property and which building are described more particularly in Exhibit A. So, uh, let me see. Um, and I'm thinking Exhibit A is on page 20. So that's the property. Uh, the period of significance of the Jones Library is 1928 to 1992, prior to the construction of the new edition. So that's the description of what is covered in this preservation restriction. Does that help to clarify? Yes, that's very helpful, Jane. The 1993 edition obscures the majority of the original North and West facades. Okay, but... Wait a minute. The period of significance. Okay. But someone could still use that to argue against the current plans for building, right? Uh, could, could I just ask a question? Um, is, is this drawn up by legal representation of the library or the town or the Commonwealth? Who who um, who's the author or of the this? historic commission? The mass historic commission. I think a lot a lot of the work has been Nate in in conjunction with the mass historic commission. Yeah. So our, our comments might be um, taken with some importance. I'm sorry, Pat. Could you? Well, if it, you know, if we. Uh, that our comments might have some importance for for some clarification or revision, and I, I'm agreeing with Jan that that um, reference to the edition does it talks about it obscuring the original architecture, but it doesn't say this isn't included as part of the significance. It it building. does say that. It does say that the that the 1993 edition is not covered by this preservation restriction. It, more than just the sentence that it obscures the majority. Where um, does it actually say that, it Jane? Said, it's because it says that it's until 92. It says the significant part is up until 92. Yeah. Right, Fire. but but I I think this sentence, the last sentence in that paragraph might best be say the 1993 edition is is not included in the significance as it obscures the majority of the original north and west you know you can but but to say specifically that it's not included in the, it, the significance yeah. the it doesn't say that it it says the period of significance of the jones library is 1928 to 1992 prior right. to construction of the new edition Right, that's straightforward. And that's straightforward, but when they add this edition, it's 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 uh, 
it's critiquing it, but it doesn't say so clearly that the addition is not considered significant. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, that's yeah. not what concerns me. I'm just worried that um, any change to the appearance of the original, whether it has uh, a section, a new section added behind that changes the look of the side or the height or anything could be considered hurting the original design by having something else around it or, you know, added to it. Because, I mean, I'm only saying that because I'm getting the sense that this town is really going to fight this. There are certain people in this town that are going to fight this tooth and nail. I mean, they've gone to great lengths already. And I don't want to provide any uh, fuel for the fire. Well, you know? there's a, the, the, the preservation restriction agreement outlines um, uh, uh, procedures for um, for approving or disallowing changes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, I can continue to go through some of the highlights and call out some of that language for you if, if that would help. Okay, sorry to extend this time. <laughs> no, um, it's just, I, 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 I've worked with these kinds of things before and, and it's important to do an exclusion not just a critique, um, and, and that any you know the, any any future building would would reflect the significance of the architecture of the original piece. So I, I'm I'm not nitpicking. I just know that exactly what Jan is saying that it could be used if it's not so specific. It could be used as a, a uh, you know, as a as a PowerPoint, of why shouldn't do the new building, new addition? So, um, let me ask Ben. Ben, what is the purpose of what? What are we doing tonight? <laughs> what is the purpose of this discussion? Um, I think Nate was just he finally got it to a point where it was he had gotten all of the changes. Um, approved by the the state a lot of like just copy editing issues and finally it, it got to his desk and it was the next step was approval by the historical commission um i think it's totally fine for us to kind of have a list of questions for nate and under understand the document better i mean it's 40 pages it's really dense you know we had a long hearing and a lot of other material to get to tonight. So I, I wasn't fully expecting everyone to have like nitpicked <laughs> the whole thing apart. Um, but I think maybe if we could uh, be, be prepared, maybe next meeting to um, weigh in uh, on it one way or another. Nate could meet with us. And if we had a time yeah. to, to talk to Nate about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I feel bad because I not Nate is the uh, truly the author, so like I just can't. It's I more can't. Just, yeah. And I, I don't mean to nitpick it because I I didn't I I didn't read it with the eye to what we're being asked to do. Yeah. And so if if you know I will I will do that, but I I just know that that you can't leave interpretation. Yeah to to those who would use it um, in in a way not intended. Can I ask a question, uh, just a procedural question about this concern about being used against the I guess what I'm what I'm trying to ask is um, if someone, if a citizen has an objection based on what's in the document, who's the arbiter of whether the citizen is correct in their interpretation of it? I believe that would be the Massachusetts Historical Commission. And does and the Massachusetts Historical Commission, do they help write this document? Is this written by the town? The town in consultation with the historical commission. Okay. 
with the We've master. already seen the library, the what were they called, the friends of or something library people send all this documentation to the Mass Historical Commission trying to get them to stop things. I mean, this has been going on for- Yeah, you know, I, under, I understand that. And I guess my, I mean, my, I, I asked the question because of my assumption would be if the Mass Historical Commission is involved in the writing and the approval of the document that those would be pretty close eyes on it. Yeah, it's just that if they if they don't have <laughs> um, if they don't have skin in the game to have a new building, they're going to write it um, in a in a way that perhaps could be taken. Yes, sir, one direction sir. or the other and then they end up looking well we wrote this and they're right it doesn't work and so no you can't do that you know what i mean i see you're so, saying okay. if, if, if I'm, I'm, be, I'm going uh, to so i'm going to suggest that we table this good plan and <laughs> and and i'll make a comment that um that this particular preservation restriction actually applied to a previous project so mm. I'm not sure it's appropriate for us to try to engineer it for any current mm. circumstance. I mean, I understand the the I understand that interest, um, but I think we're we are thinking about a previous um, event. What um, was that event, Jane? It predates it, me. It it was um, the award of. Community Preservation Act funds to uh, to the Jones Library for a previous project. So just as an F, I mean, this is neither here nor there, but um, I've been involved at the Dickinson Museum in exactly the same process with three preservation restrictions. So uh, I'm a little familiar with it, but I think we should probably wait uh, to take this up when Nate can join us. Agreed. I, I, I agree with that. And, and I will read it with a, a different eye between now and our next meeting. Okay. All right. Um, so let's see. Uh, all right. We agreed to <laughs> 20 more yeah. minutes. What's the most urgent thing on here? Um, um, yeah, we love it. Street. Don't we need to talk about East Pleasant Street? Did we get any information from Snow about those trees? Can we talk about that? Yeah, Chris uh, met with Alan on Tuesday, uh, Monday. I was not able to join. Uh, Chris has not provided, or I've, I've not been given any, I got, a, I got a brief summary of the meeting over, just over the phone, but Chris was gonna put, put something in, in writing uh i guess there's alan i think said there was only two trees that could um likely be saved i think it was the two closest to one one east pleasant um on the cemetery side of the fence hmm. and but was uh, in his opinion thought that the remainder would be um either you know damaged through the construction process, um, or just yeah, kind of not not uh, very stable at this but point. But that's only if the planning commission grants the five foot setback instead of the twenty foot setback. I mean, maybe if they weren't granting this this special condition, the trees wouldn't be damaged. So I mean, we need to consider all the options, right? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, so that's that's one of the um, special permits that the project is uh, requesting is the right. uh, setback from the from the cemetery. Yeah, and I mean that was the concern when we were there. It's just going to be too darn close. Mm -hmm. So we will need more information to consider this thoroughly. So why don't we table this one also? Mm -hmm. yeah, and I if see, could ask I'm, a further I, question, I see oh. that. Um, sorry. If, if Chris could further, you know, return to that question and say not only what 
trees are likely to be saved with the five foot setback, but could more be saved if it were returned to the the twenty foot setback that's the town requirement right. now? Right, certainly. Yeah, I will say I think um, they might. Uh, yeah, I guess I shouldn't. There might be something with the uh, because it's a non um, a nonconformity with the uh, with the existing buildings there because the existing buildings are up close against the cemetery. Yeah, but they're asking for an uh, exception, so, you know. Yeah. So anyway, you, yeah, so you I, think I, they're I, able to use the same footprint, Ben, because, because of the existing building? They're coming why they're closer asking for the that? Existing building. Yeah. They're coming closer. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I will I will get um, more information. OK, thank you. That. So yeah. I, I, I see that. Um, Susanna Fabing Muspratt is um, a participant and is interested in uh, item number seven, zoning in the BL district. So um, why don't we at least open that conversation? Yeah. Uh, it, it, and then we'll need to we'll need to include it on another agenda. Um, so if we could have I don't know maybe five or ten minutes on that and then. See if we can approve the minutes. Yeah, that'd be good. and see about public comment. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so. Um, yeah, I guess I'm happy to uh, just speak to the BL and then um, Susanna, if you'd like to comment, um, we can bring you in as well to this conversation. But the uh, the business limited district, there's uh, maybe six BL districts in, um, in, in all of Amherst. There's three in the center of town and really two that are of concern um, in the next, in, in kind of the, as far as the town council is concerned with, with their interest in, in um, zoning proposals. So the, the two BL districts are um, on Triangle Street, kind of where Primo's Pizza and there's two East, East Hampton Greenfield Savings Bank are there, TD Bank, um, kind of that area. And then the other BL district extends from uh, Brugger's at, at Coles Lane all the way to Halleck Street. Um, and so the uh, part of the, um, the town council has um, been interested in kind of thinking about uh, zoning, zoning changes to that area um, in an effort to kind of promote higher density and the ability to actually build residential there because right now it's prohibitive uh, to build residential units because of kind of some nuanced issues with the additional lot area required for every residential unit. Um, and so we've been um, kind of exploring ideas with the planning board and the CRC about ways to um, promote uh, density and all, but also keeping the BL as, a, as, a, as it's intended as a transition zone from the business general district, <clears throat> which allows five story buildings down to the uh, residential general district, um, which, you know, is three story buildings. And so the idea with the BL district is that it's kind of a transition zone to from uh, downtown Amherst to the surrounding residential areas. So um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if uh, Susanna wants to kind of talk about her proposal, um, but I guess the the interest the historical commission might have in the the uh this kind of discussion is that the some of the buildings in the bl along coles to halleck are um you know historic in in terms of kind of their architecture and uh you know i'm not sure of all the people who have lived there but certainly architecturally and geographically um important it's there are a lot of old, large single family homes that have been converted into uh, businesses. So um, I think that's kind of the topic. And so we can, it's kind of, it's, 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 we, the planning department, we have many 
uh, zoning priorities that we've been given, demolition delay included, but also you know inclusionary zoning, mixed use buildings, accessory dwelling units, uh, flood maps, a whole host of things that we're working on right now. And the BL overlay is just uh, one of those proposals. Um, and you know I expect it might not be until July until the I guess the next step is the planning board and CRC to continue to review it. But so I think we're at a pretty preliminary stage at this point. Okay. Um, we may have some more questions for you about process and where the historical commission fits in. Um, but I, I do wonder if, um, if Susanna, if you are here, if you'd like to make any comments about the material you've sent us. You can raise your hand if you would like to comment. There we go, okay. Hi, Susanna, um, you Hi. should be able to talk now. Thanks. Okay, good. Thank you very much for giving me a moment uh, to talk to you today. I don't think this is as urgent maybe as some of your other items, but um, I wanted you to be aware of it because I think it's likely to come back to you for discussion at some point. And I'm really hoping that maybe there's a way that you all could register some of your thoughts about this. So it's not just from Coles Lane to Halleck, it's from Coles Lane to McClellan. It's two blocks. And this, these are the blocks where Henny and Bakery is and Hair by Harlow and a bunch of professional offices. And it includes um, what we think of as the Silverscape building. It's now Amherst Laser and Skin Care. That's in the second block. And these are all 19th century buildings. Um, and I feel that they are kind of a piece. They give a good sense of uh, what the town looked like in the middle of the 19th century. And they make a very nice street edge along Kendrick Park that is a way of referring to the historical neighborhood behind. Yeah, there you go, some pictures. Um, the first block, the block that Hennians is in, is all owned by one developer. And the second block, there are three houses and they're currently owned, I believe, by three different people. So the first block is maybe in more jeopardy because the proposal from the planning department would encourage tearing down that whole block and putting up one monolithic building uh, the length of the block that could be three or some people are arguing for four stories. Um, the BL is seen as transitional, but that doesn't necessarily mean transitional in height. It means transitional, I think, in use in that these are sort of residential buildings that have businesses and services in them. Um, and I would like to see if there could be a way to save the historic buildings. And if the town feels that greater density is needed to do that building behind these uh, older buildings rather than in taking the buildings down and building something taller in the front along the street and then um, stepping down on the back of the lot to the current zoning uh, for that, for that uh, area. So I have um, sent, well, I worked with Pam Rooney who's got much better drawing skills than I to write up a sort of vision, our thoughts about this block and these two blocks and how they might, um, they might work. And she's done some sketches that show the concept of doing some building behind. I mean, I, a lot of these buildings have had later additions stuck onto them and I would have no problem with those coming off 
and somebody could do something more coherent with the back of the blocks. Of course, they all offer parking now for their tenants and their businesses. And so I think the town needs to think about whether what's whether it's more important to have more density or more parking, but that's not my my issue. My issue is can we save these historic buildings? Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, um, so more recently, I wrote a letter to you to the powers that be, including the um, historical commission, saying that what I think is important is that the planning department put on their best planning hats and try to come up with another option. Their option right now is to tear these buildings down. Well, essentially to incentivize tearing these buildings down and putting up three or four stories uh, along the street edge. And I would like them to present another proposal, which would be what could we do if we kept the historic buildings and then developed the back of the lots. And I'm hoping that you all would think about that. And if you feel that that's worth getting the planning department to work on that you would use your influence to second that notion, um, then we would have some comparison. And then I think the council would be in a much better position to make a decision. So that's what I have to say, and um, I'd be happy to take your questions. Thank you, Susanna, for bringing you. this up. Um, well, we know one member of the planning department pretty well. That mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this, uh, I guess, I don't know. I guess, Ben, I, uh, if you don't mind me putting you on the spot, um, and of course, you can certainly mind. <laughs> um, the, is the planning department considering other options or is there a kind of a, yeah, like so really preferred. Uh... Yeah, so we this has been a um, an ongoing conversation. We we received like all these other zoning amendments. We received a directive from town council. You know, town council uh, telling Paul Bachelman, Paul Bachelman telling Chris, and then it gets to us um, to the the initial ask of town council was for the planning department to explore, um, and it's kind of nuanced, but explore removing this pesky little footnote that is um, called footnote B that's in the zoning bylaw. And footnote B is kind of what is restricting residential development in the BL right now, because you, you are required to have, you know, a certain additional lot area per dwelling unit. So you need a, a, a lot of lot area to add dwelling units to the in the BL. So that's um, like a it's a density or or it's a restrict it's a restriction on density okay. essentially as it is now. So yeah. we were asked to look into removing that check on density in the BL and what when we studied that, we determined that actually, if you remove footnote B, it would, it would, it would, it might go too far. It would, it would, you could build a lot of uh, residential buildings in the BL, especially as you start combining lots together. So, our we kind of pivoted at that point to instead of just looking at this footnote B option developing a kind of new overlay district on top of the BL. Um, and so that's like, we, we've, we've pitched that idea to the planning board and CRC at this point. And there's definitely a lot more questions than answers because it's, it's kind of a, it's a pretty big 
change to kind of add a, an entire new overlay onto a district. So um, the idea is still kind of in the early stages. Um, and I think there's some definitely opportunity to still explore other options. Um, you know, we, we never, nothing in our proposal as it is, as it stands now, like uh, encourages the uh, uh, removal of the buildings more than um, that opportunity exists now. We're, we're just allowing for uh, um, bigger, I guess, higher density in the in the DL um, to be built with you know mixed use, promoting mixed use with uh, you know commercial and retail on the bottom floors with office and residential on the um, second and third floors. So, but I think there's you know there's opportunities to possibly introduce um, some sort of design guidelines which might come down the road um, or uh, yeah. This kind of reminds me of the whole form-based zoning mm -hmm. discussion from some years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I can see how, you know, the encouragement of mixed use with uh, businesses on first stories and residential above could incentivize developers to, you know, want to maximize um, lot coverage by building big, you know, big buildings. Yeah, well, it's like 11 East Pleasant where they want to get a, a variance on the back lot line on the setback on the street on the sides they're go they're they're almost zero lot line yet because they're trying to get every square inch out of a small piece of property and that's going to happen over and over and every time it's granted it sets a precedent exactly right yeah the, the streetscape in those two blocks along the the greens ward it is important to amherst yes it is it's very important to Amherst, and and so I I would hope um, that those buildings would, you know, anyone selling it for the, that purpose, that it would come to this commission to be able to weigh in on the importance of the streetscape, the architectural yeah, you know, importance. Have no I mean, in the end, what can we do except if somebody wants to demolish something, all we can do is delay, delay for a year. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No but but personally, I think that streetscape is important for Amherst. I it, do too, and I think if you try taking that side of the street and turning it into the east side of the street, you have a yeah. revolution in town. Uh, absolutely, and and I, I I feel very strongly that that streetscape should not be changed. You know, and it it increases in significance with the development of Kendrick Park as a park. Yes. Right. Right. Um, I just and, want to make the point that that the a local historic district is is teeth. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. That whole streetscape can be saved, but it takes time. Yeah, but you mean turn it into a local historic district. Yeah. Right. That right. is that's the, our that's main the teeth card. we have. <laughs> yeah, that would be the card to play. Yep. All right. This was very informative. Maybe we and should start the process. That's right. Well, I mean, we have, that's a, we really have a job good, to do. No, but I mean, it's a really good point. It takes time. And if there's a feeling of threat, it really is something that the, the process should be started for it. Yeah. Because if you wait until, um, you know, things are closer to the wrecking ball, you mm -hmm. don't have enough time. Yeah. No. Well, so it's re really, ur yeah, that would be really, really it's urgent. Because so, the, the teeth we have right now is a demolition delay. Mm -hmm. And we can use that time to create a local historic district. 
Yeah, yeah so right. we've talked about this before in theory, but we haven't talked about it in practice. Right. Um, where, where does it start? It starts with us coming up with a narrative to put on some forms or what do we do? I think there's a, there's a study committee that's like somehow initiated. Um, yeah, a, a lot of the information that needs to be developed by the study commission already exists because of the good work of people like Susanna. Mm -hmm. um, and Susanna, you've been through this process before with... I have been. I don't know if you... Can you still hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I worked on the uh, North Prospect Lincoln Sunset mm -hmm. at the local historic district, and we talked about those blocks and we were pretty well told that if we went there we would have the developers trying to kill the whole district i remember that yeah and so we chickened out <laughs> we didn't do it yeah. and now you know we're sort of paying the price but um it took years to to work up that district that was a big district it was over 200 properties yeah, yeah. Um, so we have an agenda item here, Susanna, thanks, thanks to your um, okay. bringing this to our attention tonight. <laughs> um, I, I, I feel that I feel very strongly about preserving the streetscape. And it sounds like our commission does too. So, you know, development can happen in different ways. It doesn't have to happen at the street. It can, it can happen behind preserving the streetscape, as you suggested. So, Ben, we have an agenda item here. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, what we need is one or two people on the commission to spearhead it, because, I mean, as Jane and I know, these things, just meeting after meeting after meeting, we don't get very far. I mean, look at the bylaws and some of the other things. It takes forever. and. For instance, the only way the writer's walk is happening is because I have been a really irritating pain in the neck to town hall. You know, they are so sick of me, but it's hard to get this stuff through. So we really need to have a couple people who are going to yeah. take this on and push and not stop because otherwise it won't be done in time. Um, I will join with others of you and be fervent about this. <laughs> fervent, I love that word. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Can I volunteer heading? <laughs> I'm happy to be involved. I, 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 I'm very struck at this moment in time, having been on the commission for two years now, of how, how diligent we all are being. Um, but I think we are at an incredibly pivotal time in the town of Amherst. I'm very concerned that we are about to lose not just affordable housing, but also the integrity of historic view sheds and and streetscape and buildings um, to things that are are really um, soulless um, and I think a lot of people have moved to Amherst or have grown to love Amherst for the things that are there um, and mourn the things that have mostly the things that have gone like the carriage shops um, but we still have the mural reinvigorated um, so I, you know, um, just from a very, very much a newcomer's perspective, I think if we can go with the teeth, as Robin says, then then we should because we're going to need a good set of a good set of chompers. <laughs> but yeah. but it sounds like we have a, a focus and a goal mm -hmm. if we can make that a historic district. Yes. yes. A local historic district. Yeah, yeah I, will right. say, I will say too, I mean, the, uh, well, I'll say two things. One, the the, tri the Triangle Street area is, I, I would venture, not considered historic. It's, you know, one story, no, mid 20th I'm... century building. So I think if speaking for planning department or town council, like, I think that's an area that could certainly see greater density. It's right at the, you know, gateway to the university it's it's, it's so already that, changed yeah so that could you know maybe be viewed as a trade-off of sorts but um what i wanted to mention is i think you know we we already have a local historic district commission in place and two 
you know, very well established historic districts already. So I think that infrastructure exists, which is good because I, I, you know, getting a new commission up and running, getting all of that going is a lot of work, but because the commission exists, and I guess uh, the, this area actually abuts the border of the North Prospect Lincoln mm -hmm. Sunset District. So it would, right. it could either be an expansion of an existing district or a um, new one all in, in, in itself. I'm not sure of the nuances of that, but. Um, well, yeah. if the, there was a seat open on that local historic commission, district commission, is it filled? Uh, no, it's not. Okay, because I was approached and I thought it was a conflict of interest with the historical commission, but you know, we do need somebody on there. I mean, we need to have a full commission because there's going to be work involved if this is going through, going forward. Now, we also had uh, Nate Malloy as our liaison <laughs> working with us mm -hmm. on the uh, Lincoln Sunset one. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I think you need. So it sounds like there are two or three different um, approaches to this. One is the, you know, tracking and supporting the vision of a different kind of overlay. The other is um, creating a local historic district. Um, and probably for both of these, um, we need to, we probably need to talk with, at least with Chris, but we'd talk with Paul also about our well, interest. They, in they've both been um, copied on my stuff, so they, okay. this will not be news to them. I will okay. say, if you, if you go to protecting the edge of Kendrick Park, go all the way up, because the next block has the original, um, St. Bridget's Church, it has another mm -hmm. Putnam House, uh, Roswell Putnam House. There's some good stuff and that's in the RN zone. It's not in the BL. So it's not under threat from this particular yeah. zoning amendment, but it might as well all get protected because somebody's gonna get some ideas about. I thought the church was there. north of Coles Lane. No? There's the, Original church. Original. Is. I'm talking about going further north. Go, go on north. Yeah, there it is, right there. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. that's, that's an old church. That used to be a church. Oh, yeah. oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, yeah. The church was a sort of up above it, but that's what's left of it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, well, that's, that's a good point, that. Susanna. To, to yeah. go do the whole strip up. To the end. That's, yeah, because that's that's part of that streetscape. That's the part we're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's north of McClellan. Yes. Right. Correct. All the way to what does it become? North Pleasant. Then. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And I mean, I guess I'm just kind of thinking out loud too. Uh, an expansion of the local historic district that doesn't preclude you know, new three-story buildings. It just means that the local historic district will have full authority to describe where the building is placed, how it looks, yeah. you know, how far it's set back, how it matches. What can be modified, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. Um, it's not gonna necessarily uh, mean it's completely, you know, set in stone exactly how it appears now it just means that the, there will be a commission that has you know a lot of teeth to dictate exactly what what's taken down and what's what replaces it or what changes are made so well i say uh let's move forward with that let's find out exactly what has to be done talk to the current local historic district commission find out what we need to how we need to start and maybe we, a couple of us should go talk to Chris and Paul and let them know, or, you know? Yeah, I, you know, I think it might be a, a good idea to have a joint meeting of the Historical Commission and the Local Historic District Commission. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. That would, that would make my life easier. <laughs> <laughs> one night free a week. 
one week. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Really managing. And I think it's a good than goal. Than hmm? so whatever I can do to help, let me know. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yes. Yeah. Very well. You may Thank regret that. <laughs> Well, thanks, is, thanks so much, Susanna. Really, well, you've given me new hope. Thank you for listening and for being so um, on board with the whole idea of trying to save those buildings. Yeah, I really yeah, appreciate it. And if yeah. I can put it, put in a plug too, Susanna, there's uh, two openings on this commission and one opening on the I was lo thinking. Local, his <laughs> local historic district. Yeah, I wanted to say, hey, why don't you join this commission? We can work together. So, well, I don't yeah. know that I can take that on. I'm yeah, almost 80 years old and I have two little grandchildren who need me two days a week and mm -hmm. It's probably more than I could do, but yeah. but I will help you save these these buildings anyway. Well, you got us fired up, that's for sure, legitimately. Well, that's wonderful. Okay, thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, it's now nine, almost nine forty-five. Do Great. we have the stomach to approve eight sets of minutes? Yes. But can we first say that we have formed an ad hoc subcommittee here for the LHD? Have we? Sure. Yeah. Hetty and Pat? Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can we yep. formalize that into the minutes and then yep. they, they can start making some inquiries? Yep. Anybody else joining us? I'll help, but I don't want to be the leader on this one. Okay. We'll, yeah. we'll be called. Yeah. I, I'll help, but I fear that if I take on too much, I'll disappoint because my workload is pretty heavy. And Robin can advise because she has the most recent knowledge of the ins and outs of stuff. No. <laughs> All right. So we've got we've got a team. We've got an ad hoc committee. Okay, and one of you just needs to spearhead things so that we keep moving and reminding us and kicking us and stuff. Well, Hetty and I will figure that out. She's probably more academically knowledgeable about this stuff that I am but um, my, my spirit well, it's is a long it's a long time since I've nominated anything to a local historic district but I'll work with you Pat and uh right. like riding a bicycle Hetty <laughs> <laughs> all we need Pat is somebody to be a pain in the butt so if you want if you uh, can do that I can do that, that. You're I can elected do that. <laughs> by acclamation and I think Hetty can do that too <laughs> Um, I I am reminded that uh, Chris Skelly is is leaving his position. Oh, but I do have to. He, I do have this personal email now. So yes. Yeah, so if, maybe if, he can join our commission. Tell him to move to Amherst. <laughs> he is pretty, he <laughs> we is pretty local, What's that? local, isn't he? Isn't he fairly local? Up in Shelburne Falls, I think. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know and that. I'll rent him a room so he can claim to be a. <laughs> so All on right. to the minutes. That's terrific. Thank you very much, Pat and Hetty. Um, well, I I I am all of a sudden very passionate about this. <sighs> I, I'm passionate about Amherst historical heritage. Yeah. And so, you know, when I look at that streetscape to think that it might be oh. threatened. Yeah. Yeah. But we had to make and we had to make some hard choices today too. Yeah. 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 So and Hetty, don't see. call yourself a newcomer. You've been on the commission two years. It was in the first meeting I ever went to, I took on the Riders Walk. So just plunge in. Two years. You're not new anymore. Yeah. You have to we have to own it. I've been here 30 years. <laughs> yeah. So we'll 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 find the medium medium to that, Hetty. Yeah, I'm, I'm just interested in looking for teeth, you know. <laughs> right, you no, know, I agree with you. I'm very I frustrated, you know. Shame, a, a, a terrible shame. Yeah. That streetscape was just yep. destroyed. Are you got some minutes for us, Jane? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We've got eight sets of minutes. Let's go. Um, so, does anyone have any objections to any of them? I revised them all, so I have no objection. Right. I have no objections because I've read them all. No objections. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> all right. So, so shall we, uh, can someone make a motion to accept 
I move to accept the minutes from, fill it in, Ben. What are the dates? I don't have oh, it. Man. Uh, January 22nd, <laughs> 2020. January 27th, 21. October 19th, 20. December 19th, 20. 20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and 21 June 24th 2020 Ju July 22nd 2020 and August 26th 2020. So I second. I move. You seconded. Okay. I second. All right. So um, let us uh, yeah, take a vote. Uh, all in favor? Jan? Yes. Pat? Yes. Robin? Yes. Hetty? Yes. Jane, yes. All right, well done. All right, then uh, because it's on the agenda, we must open the meeting for public comment. So if there's anyone who has made it this far, <laughs> made it this far <laughs> and would like to speak, uh, we'd, uh, we are very, very happy and willing to take your comment. Okay, seeing none. Um, there's, there's Hilda, sorry. Oh, Hilda, please. Very quickly, I just wanna say that that streetscape was left out of the local historic district because of the fear that they would lose the whole thing if the land that was owned by those owners was included. That's all I wanted to say. Yep, we remember. That was the fear that they'd lose everything. And so right. they were willing to give up the streetscape. But I'm so glad, I've been trying to save that ever since. So I'm glad you're joining our crew. Hilda, we've got openings on the Historical Commission. <laughs> well, you know what, nobody wants to go. I applied actually, and I got turned down by Paul. Yeah. And so I don't wanna go through that again. And you know who would be really good is my son who owns no. every other building in between the other developers there. So here's your stopgap there to keep the, the lots from being uh, aggregated for a big project. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Because, because I won't mention a name, but a certain one is knocking on his door every day. And he's knocking on my cousin Marjorie Levinson's door every day, wants to buy her out in the little green cape. They, he, he, he told me that he wants to put up a one East Pleasant Street on his side of the street. Mm. I'm not going to mention names, but it's one of two people. Okay. And yeah. so we're trying real hard. We have the citizens, no, we're the community for better planning, the CPP, and we've been very active. I got recruited by the cottage street people to help them. And, and Susanna's been very active in that. Susanna wrote all the articles on Putnam for the Wikipedia. If, you, if I, I happen to check it out by chance doing the North Amherst Library stuff. And uh, she wrote the articles. That's her specialty, oh, Roswell Field Putnam. So she, she would be a real asset. But no, I think, I, I think that you would do a lot to ask my son because he knows about construction and he's, He's done some nice work, I think. Well, the building, the yellow wide. building that you see on Halleck Street is his. He put that new addition on that looks like it was always there. I sold my house to him. Huh? I sold I know, my house to him. House. I mean, he, yeah, he's got a good hunk of that street to save it. <laughs> well, yeah. he has to apply with the citizen's interest. I don't the, think uh, he will. I think he has to be recruited. <laughs> he's not that kind of person that's going to stick his neck out. Well, you can recruit him for us. That's we've right. been, we've sort of given him the hint that he ought to, but. Tell him there was I an know, the other one, I, you might want to ask Marjorie Robinson. Okay. I don't yeah, know what she knows ideas. about old houses, but she's in the butter there. Mm-hmm. Great. All right, Thank thanks, Hilda. Yeah. Thank you, Hilda. Great, be a real I want to keep you up any later. <laughs> We're getting plenty, so I and still I was, need to yeah, have I, yeah, I gotta figure out what I gotta write of all this stuff too. All right. 
Good Even night, if they get out of way and that demolition bylaw that house is like the Garvey house, don't get that far gone. And I don't know how you do that. Right. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, we've talked about that for years and have had ideas. Well, no, I have to tell you, the North Hadley was a slum. Three of the houses that we bought there were condemned. And we brought that, Louie and we brought back that whole neighborhood there in North Hadley, around where the, the Broom, little Broom Village was. That was the center of the broom making industry in the mid 19th century. Hmm. And the broom machinery was made also in the little mills along the mill river there. So, well, it can get uh, pretty bad. And you thank can you. Yeah. Um, so let's see, uh, are there any unanticipated items or any final announcements? And then do we need to set a next meeting date? We've been trying to do the third Wednesday. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. That would be the third Wednesday in June. It'll be the sixth. Yeah. I'm just looking at my calendar. The sixth um, June. I have it marked for the 16th. Yeah. Okay. I, I really like having the consistency. Yeah, I like that too. So it'd be June sixteenth. Great. Yeah. June sixteenth at six thirty. Okay. I haven't. Uh, I don't think there's any. I haven't heard of any demolition applications at this point. So, but you never know. Um. So it would be great if we could have a meeting without any hearings and just be able to get 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 down to basics. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah. Uh... What's the What's happening with the bylaw? Where is oh, it? Yeah, good question. Oh. So that was um, that was taken up. It was supposed to be taken up by the planning board and, and CRC last week. And then at, literally at both meetings, they ran out of time. And I, I had maybe like two minutes to talk to the planning board about it. And it was similar to this. It was like 9 30, 10 o'clock at night, and they didn't really mm. offer any feedback. So the the process where it is now, it's like we planning board and CRC discuss it. They give us some initial feedback. And then at a certain point, they say, we're, we're kind of done with this at this point. We're send it to town council. And then town council then refers it back to the planning board and CRC. They hold like a joint hearing um, to actually formalize their recommendation. So what we're doing now, having these initial conversations with them is to kind of make sure that once we get to the actual public hearing, that there's no um, major surprises and, and we already have their support. Um, so I, let's see, well, I think on Tuesday, the 25th, next week, at, um, I hopefully will actually be able to present to the CRC and get their feedback. So that's kind of the next step, but it's similar to the BL overlay. Like it's, it's probably going to be like another few weeks to a month of like kind of these discussions until it's ultimately set to town council. Okay. The sooner we get through, the easier it'll be for some of these things we're dealing with right now. You know? Yeah. Robin, you have your hand raised. I have one last item. I'm sorry. Uh, and maybe that we'll, I'll ask the question to Ben first. This is around a, um, a grant application for funds for the plant uh, survey part of the Mill River uh, historic walk proposal. Ben, do you think that we should just skip the June 1st deadline and go to the October 1st deadline at this point? Um, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards personally. Because, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think so too. We need a letter of endorsement from the historic commission and we haven't even talked about it and june is right around the corner and from what your email said today yeah okay we'll go with october first never mind okay. folks we'll talk about it next time yeah <laughs> okay hey shall so, we adjourn yes let's adjourn i move it i <laughs> second second oh there's no going back on that so we're done we're all right thank you thanks so much thank you all. Everybody. 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 A oh, very group to spend the evening with. I must say, is a very <laughs> beefy meeting. And uh, thanks it, for it hanging was. in there. We got a lot done. But, but
But we did it. forward to Pat and Hetty. I want to hear what happens next. All right. Well, All we're right. going to need some guidance in this. I am. But I'm fervent, as I said. So talk to we, Ben. Talk to Susanna. We'll move forward. Right. Right. Okay. Bye, everybody. Right. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Be well. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Jane. Bye.